Ladies and gentlemen, we Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Tim Banal. No commercials, no subscriptions, no network, no rules. At the end of the day, my friends, no comparison. I actually wanted to start the show with a ho, 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 but uh, I already did the intro, so we'll just get going on the uh, proceedings. This is the special Banal of America Christmas episode, the pre-Christmas edition of the program, this last show before the holiday. Uh, And I brought together couple of my favorite people in the whole wide world and i mentioned in my email to them yesterday it didn't dawn on me till the till yesterday when i was thinking about getting ready to do the show or whatever was that uh my guests tonight here for the big christmas party are uh jeremy vaney and the one and only tyler coke john dr tyler coke john the only two people who have ever co-hosted a show with me, my, my two former co-hosts, Jeremy Vaney, of course, on the disastrous Good Parade, um, <laughs> which <laughs> that was that was a regretful experience. Not because of Vaney. We had a blast. It's We cultivated an, an unsettling fandom for that program that was, <laughs> that was really, really remarkably uh, unhinged. And, and, uh, and and Tyler Cochon, of course, who uh, co-hosted the Corona Cast with me when we were all on lockdown. One of my, oddly enough, one of my favorite periods as a uh, as a broadcaster, I guess you could say. Um, and even though I keep telling Tyler, now is the time. Gaza Cast, Gaza Cast, Tyler, we got to get going. And he says no. So <sighs> there'll be no there'll be no spinoff where where we cover the latest disasters of the world any any longer, unless it's another pandemic. I think I think we can get Tyler back to host a, another pandemic-based uh, podcast. So keep your fingers crossed. Um, and with that in mind... Yeah, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep, I, you know, every time I'm like, oh, what's this, what's this dog, respiratory dog situation? This might be... I might need to get launch a side podcast with Tyler to cover this. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the deal. Uh, my, my Two of my oldest friends, two of my, my best buddies in the field, uh, two folks that I... Hold in the highest regard and consider uh, very good, close, personal friends. Dr. Tyler Coke, John, Jeremy Vaney, welcome back to Banal of America. Thanks for joining me here uh, for the BOA Christmas party this year. Hey, thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> what was that sound? <laughs> that was supposed to be one of those, you know, those, those party favor things. <laughs> okay. Little, All yeah. right. Now I see it. Now I see oh, it. All right. This, this is terrible. I understood it. Oh, that, that, is, that is troubling. You know him too well, Tyler. Yes. <laughs> so now I talked to Vaney a few weeks ago um, on his show, and I recommend folks check it out. So, but so I kind of we kind of caught up a little bit. What the hell's going on with you, Tyler? Uh, one day I go on Twitter, and you're just gone, and I'm like, oh, I'm heartbroken. I don't, you know, you know, I love. I'm a proficient shit poster. And I, I did love to uh, love to kind of semi troll you on there, but also we had a lot of fun exchanging information and articles and whatever. And I don't blame you at all for leaving Twitter, but one day you just vanished, and I'm like, "What the fuck? Where'd Tyler go?" A couple of people asked me, they're like, "Is Tyler Coke John gone from Twitter?" But like, yeah, Tyler, he bailed. He's had enough of this this hellhole. So uh, what what have you been up to? We, we miss you um, in the in the social media sphere. Um, how have you been uh, since we last talked, and uh, what have you been up to? Well, it's uh, been almost a year since I uh, killed the Twitter account, and I don't have any any social media presence at all. Um, just wasn't working for me, and it, although it was fun, and I do miss the direct messages uh, between uh, different folks, but uh, had to find uh, uh, another way to occupy my time. So. Uh, during the pandemic, we collected a lot of golf balls around here because I lived next to a golf course, and that was actually fairly lucrative. I'd, there's a huge market for used golf balls, believe it or not. So that, that kept me going for quite a while, a couple of years. <laughs> oh, so, wow. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got interested because I found out there was uh, a guy who was a fugitive from federal authorities for uh, like 40 years hanging out in Ohio, and he was living off of the used golf ball market because it's all cash. And so, oh they, they, yeah, the officials have now uh, shut that off. So uh, that, that killed my, my dreams of living off the grid. But, Back to uh, aluminum cans insane. for you, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. There's too much competition there. This is so, insane. Uh, uh, well, so you, know, you became a, you became a your point? used golf ball impresario, essentially. I did. I did. Uh, title is Pro V1. That's the money ball. That's the one you want. And uh, there's a whole hierarchy. But uh, golf is a, a very expensive hobby. And uh, I'm here to tell you that the, the golf balls are part of that, too. So there's, wow. uh, yeah, it was uh, quite an interesting uh uh, learning experience. But other than that, I uh, just uh, occasionally post to my blog, uh, send Jeremy uh, ideas, which he uh, immediately discards. And uh, and I and, thank uh, you for that. Yeah, 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 just to just to keep him going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> really then, then not like, much. Then, then like three months later, man, he's like, hey, everyone, I had this great idea. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, he's, yeah I don't discard them. I just discard <laughs> the author of them. <laughs> yeah, you know that that is absolutely not true. <laughs> that they are treated with equal contempt and uh, disposed of. So, uh, no, he doesn't do that. He, does, he doesn't take anything from me, which is fine. You know, nah, he's a good guy. Reality. Love, doesn't sound fine. You mentioned it. You brought it up unsolicited. And I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> oh, okay, good. I'm glad <laughs> that we got this out of the way. Not only is this a thing, but it's not a thing. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. True, true <laughs> friendship right there. Yeah, well, no, Jeremy will interpret me. I, I may, I have utterances, and, and he makes sounds, and, and we can interpret yeah. for one or the other. So. You two are we each other, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm just imagining so, Tyler, like, in this unsavory world of used golf ball, like, trained, like, akin to, like, ice cream trucks and how there's turf wars and shit. And, and <laughs> I, I want to see the Netflix you, special. I want to see Well, where do you sell them? Who do you sell them to? Like, a pawn shop or what? No, Other not a pawn things. shop. Uh, it, there's actually a, a golf store and uh, in, in the back on, and by the alley. <laughs> you show mm-hmm. up. And um, the uh, nameless people basically count out how many golf balls you have. They have a very interesting system for that. And uh, they can do it very quickly. Uh, and then they'll uh, figure out how many titles Pro V1 you have. Do you want to sell those separately? And they have their prices, and then off you go. And then they cut you and a check. And what, what or who do you win if you uh, collect enough golf balls? Like, what's, what's the actual money? Actual is cash. it money or is it like is it like something you would find like I don't know like on the the what do they call that the the, the dark internet the dark web is it like oh. something from there like a selection from there a gift no. card to the dark web <laughs> yeah gift card <laughs> yes uh, it is nothing that difficult although now because of this guy that was a fugitive for so long if the you get more than eighty dollars cash you have to show them an ID and uh, they give you a check oh my so, god yeah new rules. You know, because wow. God forbid if we got away with, you know, not paying our taxes on this. Jeez. Right. Nah. What are you going to do? But it's a, it's a major operation. The first time I went to the back there to sell the balls, I was uh, uh, absolutely impressed that there were that many golf balls in the universe. And so this I was going to say petrified. Stuff. As soon as you <laughs> set it up like saying. that. Yeah, yeah, on savory characters and shit. Yeah, the first time I went back there, I was <laughs> petrified. Yeah, this guy came out. He had an eye patch. He was like, "No, <laughs> no those those you? are the those You're are the dudes in the me, office. Yeah, <laughs> those are the guys behind the bulletproof glass. You know, uh, <laughs> not unlike uh, your character in the Hill and the Hole. There you go. Dudes, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but no, they're actually uh, young guys. And uh, they uh, they have to be because geez these things are so heavy and they're just hefting them up and throwing them up you know up against the wall and there's millions of them and I don't know where they go at the Back once out to taken, be collected by you well uh, it's like a perfect it's just like a perfect job in a way <laughs> it, yeah it, it uh, replenishes itself but um, yeah they uh, once used the golf ball has I'm sorry previously owned. 
Oh. Okay, not used. Previously wow. owned. This is insane. This is a whole thing. I never thought we'd go in, in this direction, and I absolutely love it. So, <laughs> so it has now, to be marked all American as... Christmas special. We're going to go into the underground world of golf ball. Uh, <laughs> well, I, this will <laughs> definitely bring in the viewers. Okay? Well, I mean, come go. on. People are dying to know. So they're, so they're considered gently worn, essentially? Yeah, like... previously owned or uh, gently used. And uh, then it has to be marked, though. Uh, once What happens is they get sent to a company for cleaning and reconditioning, and then they're, they're marked, refurbished. Because the temptation would be huge to take these golf balls that you got at a fraction of their cost and to market them as if new, because a lot of times you can't tell. Right. And, and I'm here to tell you that most of the people who play on the golf course near me they need a lot of golf balls. They hit them once and they're gone. Okay. Yeah. And then I get them. I'm just standing out there in the weeds. <laughs> just running out, grab them. So. Tyler with a fucking bucket. Just like, oh, hey. hey backpack. Right. You need a backpack. Oh. You've got to move right. fast. Wow. Yeah. Are there other people out there competing with you? Like a fall yes. ball situation? Oh, my God. What? <laughs> it's not quite that bad. But, yeah, we we do see them. And uh, they're, oh, they're definitely out there. Because this this is actually a good I way to make it. I smell a documentary. People. Yeah. I, for this. I want the Netflix on this. Wow. Yeah. And does the but, gardener yeah. or the, the, the guy who puts, puts on the lawn sprinklers, does that guy come out with a shotgun and just start hunting you people? Well, they're, uh, it's Arizona, so they're actually afraid that I'm armed. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, don't, they don't typically. As long as I'm not uh, on the course, interfering with play, and I, what I do is get up early, get up real early. And I'm out there even before the groundskeepers are. You know, I'm running off the coyotes and the deer and everything. And, uh, oh, my God. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a lifestyle. You know, I've wow. adapted. Yeah. Uh, hell with academics. This is better. What an Fresh update. air. Is this good a exercise. bit that you and Vaney worked out for the show? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, you can see it coming, can't you? No. Yeah. No, wow. I don't think Jeremy even knew I was doing this. This is why. No, I, I knew you were doing this. What are you talking about? We've talked about this. Hmm. I know everything about you, Tyler. You know that. This uh. sounds very, it's exciting. <laughs> it's interesting. I didn't know it's you were unexpected. still doing it. Not like I just want to. I, I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. You're just doing this kind of for fun, right? You're not like, this isn't like you're living money, right? I hope. Well, as it happened uh, at I mean, first. Beer money, abs- maybe. No, it's not, it's, <laughs> not, it's not that lucrative. Uh, the guy that was making his living was getting, you know, uh, many people bringing him the golf balls. And then it's the classic thing of you, you buy low, sell high. Right. So his price is based on what he can get. But uh, no, I, we're not making a living. It was just something to do, especially during the pandemic. There was nothing going on except golf courses. They were the big yeah. business in Oh, Arizona. that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, they, Has they were Has anyone told Gene continue. Steinberg about this? <laughs> this just like that, that's this um, sounds like a little too much work, and like you got to get up yeah, early. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, I, coyotes he, away. Yeah, that's not... he he could work at night, Jeremy. It, well, that's true. You know, but then so. work is the problem, though. Really, <laughs> yeah. Is see, it. yeah, the key word yeah. was the work. But yeah. doesn't he have an Uber gig or a Lyft gig or something? Right. Isn't that I don't know what he's got anymore? Yeah, I haven't followed. He, he doesn't update us anymore on his attempts to stay uh, on on uh, on poor. So. I wonder why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you mystery. wouldn't have any idea. Oh, no. It's a mystery why he stopped sending those emails. It's, yes. really, uh, it's quite a – that's a real mystery for a, for another show. Um, now, they so we, 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 we've spent a lot of time here on this golf ball thing, but it's amazingly <laughs> weird, and I really do love it. And I was like, I would, we could end up doing a whole show on this someday. But uh, so what's going on with you, JB? What have you been up to uh, – since the last time we talked, uh, you know, we, I, I don't think you do as a jovial a sort of like update. I don't know. Maybe you do on when we talked last time, if we sort of did the update, but cause you don't update me on what you've been doing. Cause it was your show. So it was like, yeah. you asked me, you know, so that makes sense. So what have you, what have you been up to, uh, you know, since the last time you were on, but all America was probably like a year and a half or so ago. Jeez, a year and a half. Uh, well, since then Something I, about. Began guest hosting Dreamland with Whitley Streber. Uh, Yeah, so I've been doing that once a month. We'll see how much longer I go. 
Ting. You say that all the time. You say that <laughs> all the time. I kind of mean it this time. We'll we'll see how much longer I've got. How much gas is in this tank? <laughs> Tyler, how uh, often? Tyler, you talk to him. Tyler, you talk to him often, doesn't he? He's this is constant refrain from being every He's twenty minutes. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're I like that. Trying to get away, but I get dragged back in. Well, I like doing the other things I'm doing. Like I'm also doing. A YouTube show. I'm now a YouTuber called He's So Vainy, which is uh, oh, reaction God, videos really? to everything from UFOs to spirituality and consciousness and all that crap. So, oh yeah, God. I do a reaction, a video reaction show, which is just fun for me to do. What? Uh, and then in real life, uh, and I'm still semi-writing a book, uh, but <clears throat> when I'm not doing all of that, I'm uh, taking care of ducks and chasing away wild boar. And oh. we, we have a f- sort of friend, a person... <laughs> We have a person who comes and, and has a big trap. So he, he has come to trap these boar. <laughs> this is a couple of days ago. And so we oh, have like right. big couple of big boar and then they're little babies. And they're all congregated underneath a mango tree outside of our back porch, like right off the porch. So they all kind of want to live there. So chasing them away, once they realize you're not going to hurt them, they don't chase so easy anymore. <laughs> and then they start coming up to you, and they start going to the duck pool, and they start trying to take over. So he came uh, with a trap, and he trapped one, and they all saw it happen, and they all ran. So they're never going out. near that trap again. It, but then the next <laughs> day, he set up the trap, and some new one uh, got caught in there. So he took that one away. But then I start seeing what look like babies that look exactly like that one. So I'm wondering if its kids have now been adopted into this family. And, in fact, the yes. wild boar situation is growing. Is, in, yes. In I was just say. <laughs> so this oh, is problematic. Wow. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> See, it's going to turn out you hired, like, several little boars wearing a costume. They were like, this is it. We figured them out. <laughs> My goodness. You're so veiny. That's uh, so you have a reaction, reaction show, but it's to like paranormal spirituality. Yeah, so stuff. it's from it's everything from it's Neil deGrasse like, yeah. Tyson talking about okay. nothingness to Elon Musk talking about consciousness to someone you've never heard of describing fifth density bullshit. You know? Okay. So okay. it's like everything in between, and I, I did one on like uh, a Joe Rogan clip of Na- Nap and uh, and Corbell talking about. Grush, so you know it's everything in between. It's just a fun reaction show where if I put Vaney in the title, then you know that it's going to be like fun and arrogant and stuff. So I don't have to hear from morons being like, "Oh, you're arrogant, you're stupid." It's like, no, you're you're stupid, you're stupid. Wow. Yeah, that's basically the show. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> that is the uh, that's the un- unseemly side of uh of being a content creator in this field i think i joked with you uh right when we launched but all america within like the first relaunch but all america like in october like within the first 24 hours there was someone emailing like i can't figure out how to turn it on it's like dude i don't know what the fuck to tell you it's, it's, now we're on fucking youtube too like there should well, let be me, any problem. Hey. There should be no problem hearing this show like, let me ask you this going Tim. To your house and turning it on <laughs> Yes. Have you have you noticed a difference? Like, I don't know if you pay attention to people who, who hate you in your audience, but you do. <laughs> have you noticed a difference where it used to just be like they hate you and they make their argument or they just hate you and you say why and then they shut up? And now it's like I find a large contingent of people who hate me and are like, because I hate you, everyone here hates you. Right, everybody? And then they spam the board with, like, you got to get rid of this guy because everyone knows he oh, sucks. Is... We all hate him. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's not enough to just, like, hate <clears throat> me and move on. You've got to make sure that everyone hates me somehow. Like, is that new or has that always been there? No, I think that's new. That's like the pile-on. It's like an Internet thing. <laughs> Although the thing with they're coming in with the fake names and it's just, I don't, I, I don't want, I just ignore that i really don't get a lot of haters i think because i'm kind of just chill even though i'm ordinary and grumpy all the time but it's like i'm I'm not really i'm grumpy at the world in general not at uh anyone in particular so but i don't know it's that's unfortunate well yeah i mean so my advice to any aspiring podcasters out there is uh don't guest host for the love and light crowd because they're full of rage and anger yeah, well, that's if, interesting. If they're not your audience, if they're not your audience, they don't want to hear you. <laughs> like, right, there's no point. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's the plight of the guest host. That's the plight of the guest host. So, mm-hmm. yeah. They're always thinking someone else better that they, yeah. They're like, why you got, yeah, is it like that? Like, why you got this guy on all the time? We want to hear you. Jeez. It, why it's but need, worse why than that. Like, but mean. Off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's like really, yeah. like, cruel people. Uh, that would be okay. <laughs> that would, there's, like, no sense of. It's just like, why is this happening? Why is my world collapsing? And this, and I'm listening to this guy in my ears. It's like, well, you yeah. can turn it off. That's an option. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> very. That's yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Jeez, you think they know you were the guest host by now? You've been doing it for like several months. You'd think, but every every time, there's always someone who's like, "Hey, where's Whitley?" But they can't spell Whitley. <laughs> They're such big fans of Whitley Strieber that they, they spell it Whitney or Strieber is spelled wrong somehow. Like every yeah, fucking time. Yeah, I and the E is transposed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the thing that I always, Brad Steiger's name had the same, had the I and the E. I always like fucked them both up because it was like I couldn't remember which one was which. So <laughs> These are the fascinating behind the scenes glimpses of uh, the world of. Paranormal knee. And now, okay, so I said I was loath to talk about the the, the the UFO thing, but we we have time. We have a lot. We just got started, and we, we don't want to roll right into holiday foolishness. So, uh, will this? I, Vanny and I talked about this, Tyler, recently. Well, well last time we chatted, because I, when I proposed this Christmas uh, party episode, and so. We remember when you first got into this, you kind of were like, you, you were a neophyte to this, the, the crazy world of UFO people and everything. Um, but you got in right before this big UAP explosion. So I'm interested in your sort of take, because they and I very quickly tried to instill a deep amount of cynicism in you. When we like first met you, we were like, no, don't trust anyone in this. This is <laughs> fucking crazy. Nothing, nothing's going to happen. This is nuts. And then all of a sudden, all this shit happened. And it was like, oh, shit. Well, you know, I don't believe like the narrative of we're getting fed about all this per se. But uh, at least people are talking about UFOs and shit. Um, and you were talking about UFOs before they were cool. Obviously, all of us were. But you, you jumped in. And it was like. Oh, Tyler Coke, Dr. Tyler Coke Johns. This is like, he's fucking talking about all this shit. You know, now you can't swing a stick without smacking a, you know, some <laughs> fucking nerd from a university who's like, oh, I'm interested in uh, UAPs. And it's like, now they're all jumping on the thing. Tyler was one of the first academics to get mixed up in the UFO thing in, of modern times, of recent years, before people come at me with James E. McDonald and shit. Um, all right, I've just rambled into this. So what do you think? What do you, this is classic. This is banal. This is Tyler Coke Johns, Jerry Vane is fucking just just we're really uh throwing out the playbook. So what do you what's your take on all the shit that's gone down in the last few years from when you first got into this and we're like, oh what's this what's this all about? And now it's a, a growing concern or going concern. It's quite uh, quite a sea change, as I, I told Jeremy. I, I think on the Dreamland episode, um, we talked about this a little bit, that uh, within, say, the last five, six years, uh, I would say since the New York Times article by Leslie Kane yeah. and Blumenthal and Helene Cooper, uh, that seemed to have gotten people's attention, uh, despite the, a lot of problems with that particular article. I mean, we could critique that. But what has transpired, um, although some of the characters are, in my view, sort of classic ufology type characters, you can't quite figure out where they came from or what's the truth. Uh, it has, uh, things have changed where this has become, as you said, a legitimate topic of inquiry. And it, the, the, sort of the, the fortunes of UFO study have changed uh, up and down in the scientific community. So 40, 50 years ago, it was a lot more uh I guess, acceptable to talk about them that waned and now we're, we're back to the, it's on the front burner, but it, it's, boy, Tim, uh, I, since I was a kid, I haven't remembered people talking about this with the idea of, uh, Hey, what's really going on as opposed to, yeah. geez, that's stupid. You know, as right. It used exactly. To be. Yeah. Uh, it's so nice. Tyler, I mean, can, can yeah, I ask man. a follow up? which sure. is, since, because you're a doctor and you came into this, and you really wanted to help, and you never fell into the trap of, of 
believing or promoting bullshit, does it does it strike you in any way that like from Avi Loeb claiming you know that that a comet could be a spaceship to Nolan claiming that a Coke can crushed Coke can could be alien metal whatever it is. Like, do you, does it bother you that so many doctors who have gotten into this field have taken up for some sort of bullshitty position? It's, uh, this is just my opinion. Okay. I, I don't know what other people think. That's a real temptation because you can, they always say, know your audience. And it's very easy to figure out what to pitch to make those people happy. And I have a feeling that maybe some people have done maybe a little bit more of that than is for the, the best scientific purposes. Uh, Avi Loeb, for example, is a very accomplished scientist. And I think he must see opportunities that I don't quite understand with this. But there are some things that he said that are uh, really difficult to defend from a scientific basis, although he's, he certainly has a right to his opinion. And it's certainly not ruled out, you know, that, that classic argument, well, you can't disprove it kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's strange to see because we're talking about, uh, in some cases, very accomplished people who know how to do these yeah. sorts of investigations and sometimes choose not to. And I assume that that choice is made deliberately. And uh, there's some reason behind it. A lot of times I can't fathom what it is. Be that as yeah. it may. You know, I right. mean, this is, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Tyler. Go ahead. It, it's just um, interesting. I think that some people now uh, that there's military interest and, uh, you know, I mean, remember how this started, the Tic Tac and the go fast and all these these strange things. And they are strange. They, they have no bearing on anything that I've had people tell me about, you know, nothing that I've looked for or seen, uh, you know, or debunked, whatnot. Uh, so it, it's a little, um, uh, I guess not as fun in a way but the other thing yeah. is that um with the uh, the recent spate of uap stuff you just have to kind of sit there and take whatever they give you and they're, yes. they're spooning yeah. it out you know and they're the sure. you. yes and so you know, that's not very satisfactory for a uh, scientific approach in, in again in my opinion so that kind of kept me on the sidelines what yeah. i'm really excited about is the nasa report and they came out, and now no one knows how this will play out. I thought but it already came out. They're coming out. The with report one? came out, but how okay. their recommendations will be oh. basically acted on or not, because it's probably going to require some funding. Uh, what NASA, what the the uh, select committee or advisory committee uh, actually recommended, is actual, real empowerment of UFO people, of experiencers. Now, I, I don't know if they'll really have, like, apps you can put on your phone that have been validated. You can take a picture and it'll, it'll record all the data. But if, if it comes to that where everyone is empowered as an investigator and you've got some real tools, suddenly you don't have to sit there and wait for people to spoon you things. You can go out and get your data. Okay? The first thing, the first thing I'm going to do is when I get the calibrated approved NASA app is I'll have my tickets to the big island before I have the app downloaded and I'm going to stand out there on Jeremy's lava field and I'm going to say bring them in Jeremy okay come on let's do the experiencer thing and let's get it documented wow, and then we're go. off to the Nobel Why Prize me? a lot of pressure on me because <laughs> you're the yeah. only experiencer I know oh, <laughs> well, <it's>, all right <laughs> Have you ever known me I to mean, call them in? <laughs> no, yeah, I know. Was but, this something you could do? Why is, are you fucking? You've been in my house multiple times, Vanny. You never called on the aliens. To come it, it's a fucking emergency. <laughs> Use your imagination. Come on, the Nobel, dude. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see what, what I can do. What strikes me? What strikes me about this? And I, I'm not even really making a judgment one way or the other. Like, because uh, it's just a spot observation. I need more time to think about it. But it's like because it could be good, it could be bad, whatever. It's just astounding. That we're talking about NASA, uh, like an official NASA app to hunt fucking UFOs. It's like, boy, they, we really come a long way <laughs> from uh -huh. when they don't want to even talk about it. Um, you know, so it's very like, okay, now they're like, okay, we're going to get, get an app to fucking take pictures of uh, what you think is a UFO. It's Well, that's the thing, Tyler. We're up against it in a way. 
where uh, they're, they're only fucking concerned with the government UFO. They spot the military spotted UFOs. It's like until they're like, say, every, everybody come to us with your UFO shit. I think we're just going to kind of have the same, uh, you know, going in circles sort of situation that that we uh, have had so far with this government thing. You Very know, they keep being like, hey, the data's not that good for all these. Like 90% of them are balloons or whatever. And the other 10%, we need better data. So, um, but these are all just from like jets and shit. It's like, yeah. what about, what about Vaney out in Hawaii? Why not? Why not him? Why don't you, why don't you guys go and check him out? Vaney, chime in here. Cause you, you notice when the emails, Tyler Vaney's like, oh, as soon as there's a quiet time, I'm talking about UFOs. He's like folding laundry, folks. You can't see him in the box. He's not even paying attention to us. I just saw him pet a goat. I don't even know how he got a goat in there. The goat helps with the laundry. He yeah. brings the laundry in. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. The goat eats living. my underwear, and I put it on the dark web, and that's how I make my money. Oh, oh God. Wow. I, I, I get, now I know what to spend my gift card on. Holy cow. Yes. Oh. That's, that's raw creativity. Jesus. Well, I'm so very, the more you like, the you're, more you're talking perspective on all this. Well, the more you're talking about this, the more it's like, yeah, the clarity of we have pretty much overnight or within the span of a couple of years uh, gone from, um, yeah, UFOs being a topic that like of civilian life to now we're either going to be ha- handed some anonymous footage to Jeremy Corbell from the military that he's going to show us or they're going to directly just hand us footage and we're going to see it and that's it. And that's all we're to comment on. And that's all we're to think about when we think of UFOs. Yeah, yeah. Right. And right. it's like, why? So the question is like, why they could, could they have done this at any other point in history? Like why now is the military <laughs> stepping in in such a big way to control this narrative? And I just wonder if it's not simply like, they saw, they see where we are psychologically as a society now. We're like the QAnon and COVID and these sorts of things where you don't need to have internal logic for your cult thing to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? For your idea to spread like wildfire, you don't even need a coherent story with an internal logic. And maybe they just see like we're at a point where we're ready for, for that to be uh to be controlled by that in some way for, for could be for a host of reasons, you yeah. know, funding for military projects, funding for NASA politicians, getting right, reelected, right. whatever it is. But I just want like, but is it just, it just feels like this subject should be even in the using it for a re- nefarious reason should be more momentous than the normal everyday crap that they do anyway. But I can't think of one, like I can't think of one big sort of conspiracy reason that this is happening outside of like, well, an invisible enemy sure makes for uh, a good good fundraiser for the military. I don't, I don't know. Do, do you guys see, or, or, or even like, um, I don't know, David Grush, like whether he's telling the truth that people told him these things or not, it's interesting to me, the one thing that I haven't heard anyone say about him is that he seems to know a lot about how all of this works. Like in terms of him going to Congress being able to say X, not being able to say Y, and then explaining to us why that is, you know, the whole thing, then why is it that he can't figure out that what their next move is going to be? Like he went to Congress and he claims that he really wants all this disclosure stuff to happen. And then it never really seems to happen. They can't quite get him into a skiff or if they do, there's some sort of shenanigans. Why doesn't he see that coming next? Why doesn't he explain to us how that's a possibility before getting our hopes up. So it just seems like there's this real weird controlling rigmarole that that's going yeah. on that I, I don't get, I don't get what the end game is with it. If there is one, and if there isn't a big end game, how disappointing and deflating is that? Right. You want it to be, yeah, sport, <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know if it was on your show or, or but all America, but I, I hollered at one point at just about how like they make this out to be like the biggest story of all time. And it would be, I suppose if like aliens. Yeah. Aliens. Right. So, but at the same time, it's like, then they're like, look, but I can't say anything because I'm under a NDA or whatever. It's like, dude, this is the, the, but you can't in one say, it's like, this is the biggest story of all time. And it's like, but I might go to jail if I tell you about it. It's like, come on, dude, if it's that fucking big, 
Like, you'll be a call celebrity. No one's going to fucking, they'll be like, free, let's say Tyler Cochon came out tomorrow and he's like, yeah, I work for the government, I approve of aliens or whatever, and here's, here's rock solid proof. Fuck your NDA. I've had enough of this shit. Um, and then they're like, lock him up. They're like, lock up Tyler Cochon. But people wouldn't be like rallying and shit. So to me, it's like, you can't, if it's really that big a story, then you got to break your NDAs. I'm sorry. <laughs> so otherwise, or don't tell me that it's that fucking big. I don't know. It's, I just can't handle that sort of like, uh, it just doesn't add up. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. the, other, the other thing to think about is um, beginning with the, the Leslie Kane et al. article in the New York Times, we had indications that there were um, parts or pieces of craft stored somewhere. Uh, yeah. Never really got, but there's yeah. never there's never yeah. been a whistleblower who's come forward by dark of night and left the note on the senator's desk saying, "Look here, right? This right. is where they are. You know, this this is where the bodies are, uh, yeah. and I think that's strange. So if you didn't want to come out, if you were afraid of violating your oath, um, and that I'll tell you that that's strange because Senator Mark Kelly. Just put out a thing saying, hey, by the way, uh, you ex-military types who want to um, consult or uh, work for other foreign entities, uh, you can't do that. You know, they're trying to, to make that a law. And I, I'm very confused because I thought that went against your, your military oath and your non-disclosures and all these sorts of things they hold over you. But apparently it doesn't. So then my question would be is like, well, what what's going on? Why isn't somebody, as you say, coming forward and saying, "Hey, the hell with this! I'm just talking." And right, have- and like David, like David Gruff, kind of like it was. It felt like it was kind of lip service in a way, where it's like, "Okay, you're just saying this shit." Where we need the people who have the shit again. It goes back to the banal conundrum, the 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 mantra, the fucking ethos here. Show me the fucking alien. At least that. Yeah. There you I go. Saw he, he's got some aliens down there in Mexico. I don't necessarily. <laughs> he follows. He follows the banal, you know, seal of approval. <laughs> he showed us the fucking aliens. But there's also, people, you know, it's, yeah. nobody nobody finds it the least bit suspicious that this guy only talks to like unknown podcasters sycophantic news people like he never sits down with like 60 minutes or 2020 or any of the like investigative news outlets where he's going to be like challenged and asked real questions nobody finds that the least bit suspicious the greatest story of all time here i mean it's weird right yeah it's it's, uh, hard to explain yeah i just think that they kind of everybody wrote all like all the well it was interesting because the new york times and the washington post didn't cover his big revelations when he came forward. So to me, that was like, okay, something's kind of off here. So I don't know. It's all very, it's all very interesting to me. It's like, God, they're running, they're pushing the, they're pushing it. That's for sure. They're pushing it of like how far they can take this. And it's like, at some point people are going to get tired. Like I said, just like, just show me the aliens at this point. Uh, I guess to the best of the people out there, I see a lot of people. It's like, Oh, the government said UFOs are real, man. It's like, all right, but I'm in it for the aliens, dude. So let's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always known UFOs were real, dude. We want to know what the fuck's in them. Yeah, I I agree, and I, I think you're absolutely right that if we get these devices and and um, apps that will let people uh, actually do their own examinations, that we will probably find what we've already found is that 90 percent of it is misidentification of known things, and that's yeah. that's absolutely fine. The, the thing that I really like is the idea that uh, if this came to fruition, that the, um, the gatekeepers would no longer be the gatekeepers. And if you got something really good with the data behind it, and again, we're, we're speculating as to what would be made and how it would roll out. Um, yeah. They're not going to be able to keep a lid on it. If somebody got something really good, it's going to be on TikTok, you know, before. Right, I, right. Yeah. So. It, it, it's quite a, that's why I say we don't know if this will come to fruition. And I personally uh, have grave difficulty imagining that the people, the powers that be are going to relinquish their control. Right, right. But we'll see. Yeah. It's interesting, though, that this ad hoc group and, and these, you know, these are pointy head professors and, and you know, uh, blue sky dreamers and whatnot came forward and said, well, here's what you could do. 
and it's not necessarily maintain secrecy and control. Yeah. That was well, interesting. Yeah, you know, I'd be fine if the government came out where they were like, well, they kind of say that, but no one believes them. If the government was like, look, honestly, we don't know what the fuck these are. So, like, everybody, let's all get together and try and figure it out. So, hey, maybe that'll be, <laughs> you know, but then it's like, fuck you, man. Let's start from square one. But I guess, all right, sure. But yeah, <laughs> Well, yeah. actually, they are. They, they kind of had have said that we don't have anything in the no in the, it's exactly uh, what the doing. Yeah. yeah yes and so they're they're saying you know we we so, don't want the 1952 you know uh, sightings yeah or, exactly uh, it makes uh, sense though it makes sense because it does visit all that it, and I mean well, look for years on the show I, I for years on the show I call for just let's let's take a second look at this let's take a fresh look so I can't you know I actually am one of those people though that trusts what the government's doing. Uh, to a point where it's like, all right, they're actually trying to figure it out. And it turns out, you know, trying to catch UFOs with uh, accidental government uh, jet videos is not the best way to do it. If you're, if you're <laughs> trying to find an alien, you know what I mean? If we're trying to get the aliens, like, uh, you know, that's like to me, like trying to catch Bigfoot, I just put a fucking, like a game camera in my backyard. And it's like, well, if I just... You know, one day something will will cross through and it'll probably be big, but I just got to keep it on all the time. It's not. They're not. Well, you're getting to something here, Tim. Why is it that we are so set to um, pay lip service to how we feel that this has to be an advanced intelligence uh, from another planet or another dimension with advanced technology and advanced science and all this? But like we say that out loud. But at the same time, the way that we treat the phenomena is as if it's a dumb animal. Like, from they crash all the time, oh, yeah, yeah. and we retrieve them all the time, to, right, like, if we just do gun camera footage, you know, if we just chase them around in our plane, maybe we'll catch one. Like, as you know, we need the government to disclose, knowing full well that if the quote-unquote alien wanted to disclose, disclosure would be over. Right. Uh, so what is the, what do you think that disconnect is, either of you, uh, between... How we say out loud, we think it's an advanced whatever, but the way we actually speak about it in conversation is as though it's a stupid animal that we can somehow control. It's some kind of it's projection on the part of uh, our species, I guess. It's projection because it's like we can't fathom like that they are more superior to us, so we have to kind of like because that that would be terrifying. It would be like paradigm shifting that uh, they're more advanced than we are, so they have to be on our level or lower in order to cope with that possibility. I think that's, I think that's probably really what it is because, uh, you know, we, we just have to kind of make them on our level, uh, at the very least, because otherwise it's, it's too troubling a thing to think about. What do you think, Tyler? No, I agree that if in fact we have visitors from far flung areas, it's beyond frightening. Because that that's absolutely astonishing. We look at it and go, my God, this universe is so vast. It would take us thousands of years. You know, even using radio waves, going back and forth to be difficult to communicate with someone, and we even if we knew they were there. Yeah. So the thing that kind of fascinated me, it hasn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm I just missed it. Is that I kind of thought with the new interest in Mars that we would get say, um, the uh, idea of Mac Tony's recycled, you know, where we had a, a lost civilization from Mars that subsurface or some such thing. Yeah. And I they're the ones world. coming. Yeah. Uh, but wow. so far, nobody, unless it's in science fiction that I didn't get to yet. Uh, you know, I well, usually pick up most of the Mars stuff, to be honest. So, Well, to your end, Vaney, though, uh, there are some people that don't treat the the other like uh, dumb animals and they like, they go on the fucking other deep end and they become cults and shit. So it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not all, it's not all uh, good or bad, I guess. It sounds like it's all bad when you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the one thing since you brought up Bigfoot, right. Bigfoot and how we, uh -oh. we go about, I would say uh, also, uh, for Jeremy's um, issues with his, um, I guess, critters, Cheetos. 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 What do you mean? Cheetos what? To get they, rid of hogs? 
Yeah, well, for his pigs or, or whatever critters are bothering you, they are magnetically attracted to Cheetos. And so, well, he wants them to go away, dude. No, and they, he puts them in the trap. It's the one thing oh, that Stephen Greer wow. hasn't figured out yet. Meanwhile, three conversations ago. Yeah. yeah so, he's, he's sorry. Been sitting it on just, that one for a while. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. You guys talk too fast. Master you know? of the callback. I like that. <laughs> so, oh, my God. I, I agree with Jeremy, though, that it's so hard to discern what the what the rationale is of the of the government authorities. And in particular, yeah. I, you guys have been around long enough to have probably heard the thing that the reason that it's all so hush hush is that the government does not want right. anybody to know that they're helpless against these yeah, guys. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now yeah. we're out there with the things flying around the destroyers and going, oh, my God, whatever shall we do? I thought, well, right. there's a waste of my taxpayer dollars. You've got a billion dollar machine there and you can't take care of the stuff flying around you. Great. Here's I'll give you a new conspiracy theory for Christmas. Oh, oh cool. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's an old conspiracy theory that's been out there, but uh, I'll tie it to what's going on now. I'll tie it all in. So they need they want to somehow get more money into the military. And then it's like, what the fuck do they need more money in the military for? <laughs> Because the money in the military is being funneled to figure out how to survive the fucking death of the planet, which is going to happen in, you know, climate change and all that. Like it's getting worse. I'm convinced now. I'm, I, I, I'm just going to go down with the ship. I still refuse to participate in any recycling <laughs> programs whatsoever. It's, it's too far gone at this point to even to even make a dent in what's going to happen. So it's like, fuck that. Why should I be inconvenienced? So, <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> I'm convinced the, I'm convinced that, that that's what's happening. That, that, that's the more eminent threat. Fuck the aliens. You have to fuck, like it's, that's what's really the problem. And uh, it's either a distraction or it's like part of some overarching plan to fucking, figure out how the powers that be can survive what's coming next. Where it's like, we need a big giant, build giant underground fucking bases or with you know, all that talk that they have them. It's like, maybe they don't. Maybe, maybe now they're like, maybe we should build, start building those underground bases soon because shit's going to get really bad. So I don't know. Just a random, that's a new conspiracy theory for Christmas. Go ahead, Tyler. You take that. Well, there's no, there's no question that, that one, they, the Pentagon or I guess the, the larger, the military will game out all these scenarios. You know, what yeah. happens if if the sea level rises, you know, and Jeremy's house is, is in danger of being inundated? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, they have to plan for, and they do, and and they have. I mean, when I worked at Argonne National Lab, boy, it's yeah. 30 plus years ago, they were already, the climate modelers were already using the supercomputers to model and figure out. And a lot of that was, I believe, funded uh, by the military in one form or another. So that, oh, they, sure. the, you know, the sort of um, tabletop exercises and, and games or whatnot, they, I mean, they call them games. Uh, they're quite serious to figure out what would be the, the ramifications and, yeah. you know, what would that mean? So it's... There's, uh, there's no way the military needs all that money. So it's like, where's that really going? That's the kind of... <laughs> well, here's what's weird about that then, is that they've known that there's going to be uh, this... And they supposed that it would cause a new ice age since the 70s. The CIA had a report about this in the 70s. So what have they been doing since the 70s to do anything about it? And I wonder if, like, part of the problem is that all of the projections were like, well, we're talking hundreds of years from now. And yeah. You can't factor in what you don't know. And we see all of these little things in earth Indicators. and in the atmosphere yeah. that are new to us that are like oh wait that's a factor oh wait that's a factor oh this happening is a factor and uh oh and yeah and yeah. everything's like speeding up what we thought would happen and now it's like at our door like i wonder if yeah, that's part of the yeah. problem where they just thought they had a lot more time than they do because they didn't yeah know. i think that's probably part of it yeah no it, it could be it could be and even like know. even so like to throw the, yeah so like this this new conspiracy theory. So even though, yeah, so all this time, it just kind of dawned on them recently. They're like, we really got to actually come up with like an escape plan or something because this is not a good situation. Elon's so not working like, out. He's not bringing yeah. us to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elon's uh, major escape plan, as I understand it, is uh, 
make it a colony on Mars, which is not likely to work out for any of us. Uh, yeah. So well, Tyler, probably... you're a doctor. I'm going to give you the, the banal question that I'm sure he's already asked you 8 million times somewhere else. Uh, if they can terraform Mars, why can't they just terraform Earth? No, we're doing it. It's not working. In a good way. In a good way, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's seriously. Yeah. We're, uh, can we reverse it back? Uh, there's actually a large uh, number of efforts to geoengineer uh, the world back to uh, a better place in terms of its carbon balance. Oh. And uh, those efforts are um, just beginning, but they're also, as you can imagine, exceptionally dangerous because uh, if you go ahead and start a process, then you can't stop it. Uh, it could be uh, quite uh, calamitous for uh, everyone. Uh, we don't know uh, who all is going to uh, become impatient, you know, I mean, with uh, global warming, uh, because we're, we're stuck with it for a long time. The carbon balance isn't going to shift down anytime soon. And people may start to demand like, okay, we got we to gotta put iron in the ocean, all right? or we have to make the, mo the ocean more alkaline to suck up bicarbonate. And all those things that may come to pass. So uh, it's, boy, I tell you, uh, the wild times <laughs> ahead. Seriously, you're going to have lots and lots of different uh, approaches. One was getting to the point of actual uh, sort of implementation, and they realized, like, they didn't have any approvals. And uh, maybe the people involved wow. uh, should have some uh, voice in that, you know. So it, it's this is the scary part is when the scientists themselves panic and then say, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, we got to do something. Uh, make very, yeah, be careful, you know, who you give the keys to the planet to and say, yeah, go ahead. I love how and, apocalyptic you are, Dr. Tyler. Well, it's, it's <laughs> second, second nature. You know, you're talking I know, about, no, I just, when, that's, it's one of my favorite, one of my, one of my favorite of your traits. I love it. Well, you know, <laughs> you said, us. Every we time could. it's like I, I'm getting flashbacks <laughs> to the Corona cast now, where it was like you always love to bust out the worst case scenario. I'm like, oh shit, I I could lose an arm. This is getting serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you get to choose. So yeah, exactly. okay. But no, it's, you said uh, earlier. You know, well, when the next pandemic comes back, you know, you can we can have another uh, Corona cast like show. And I I don't know if you caught me looking at my watch. But wow. there will be a next pandemic. And, uh, you know, yeah, I don't be... know if they'll ever have something like what we had where everyone had to stay. Like, it's going to take, like, another generation before people <laughs> will go along with that. So who knows? The uh, next pandemic will be really calamitous because people will be like, no, fuck that. I'm not doing this again. Well, it'll actually be uh, – Jeremy is basically our canary in the coal mine because – Oh, excellent. It, It'll come through his ducts, and, and when he doesn't answer your phone calls anymore, get into the bunker. Thanks. Well, he's like nine hours behind, so. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> maybe maybe we can put an that. air tag on him, and when he stops moving. <laughs> that, that's right after the show. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, Tim, I'll, I know people, yes. people can't see this. I, I'm sorry to interrupt the flow of the conversation. I just have to comment that your Botox looks amazing. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm looking good here, yeah. This this horrifying, I told you about this, uh, the, the glare there on my head, yeah. People, that's why half the reason why we don't do the show on video yet. I haven't figured out this lighting situation, how to, how to put that, how I can just get climb on a ladder and turn that light, that one light out, I bet it would look great. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you uh, probably the greatest nod or tip of the cap, Tyler, that I can think of. So this is a true story. So I just was out at my in California visiting family for Thanksgiving. And my brother, uh, just in casual conversation while we were watching the football, said to my mother, I was just sitting there listening. He said, you know, they have this thing now for people with colon problems or digestive problems where they take shit. And they put shit in the another person and goes through, like, explains the whole thing. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, Dr. Tyler fucking Coke, John. He already <laughs> told me about the shit transplants fucking years ago. And I didn't I didn't bring it up. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to brag about how we we were we were all over the shit transplants like years before. But I'm just sitting there nodding my head like. 
Metallica, John. I already, I already know about this. Is this human centipede material? This sounds like something we already covered. No, this is a digestive treatment for people. Tyler was telling me all about it a few years ago. Yeah, it's des- it, it started out as a desperation treatment for people that had pseudomembranous colitis caused by a bacterium known as Clostridium difficile. And the name actually reflects difficult, and it's harder than hell to get rid of once you've got it. And so they transplanted basically healthy uh, gut flora through fecal samples into these patients. There were a couple of different ways of doing that. And it seemed to work better than the classic antibiotics. So it was uh, first real attempt to manipulate the microbiome. So and now anyway, it's like a regular thing. Well, it, it depends on, uh, you know, how, how much you're willing to believe uh, that people can actually accomplish with this. Well, you know, there is one thing ah. I think at the Broad Institute where they're studying, uh, let's get the microbiomes of uh, uh, Olympic athletes. And, uh, and give that to people. And, and it, it, you know, I was telling the students, you could go ahead and get Michael Jordan's microbiome and completely transplant it into me. I will never play basketball like Michael Jordan. Quite yeah. confident that that is going to be how it, it plays out. But that doesn't mean there's not a market for it. Yeah. Dreams, they die hard, man. And especially on the dark web, on my dark website, where I'm going to put footage of people taking this. It sounds... Oh, <laughs> Man, he wants that gift card. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. All right, let's transition now into holiday spirit. Let's hold on. Let me get my... Uh-oh. Right. Sound effects? Music? What's going on? No, no, no. Fucking... Nog? Yeah, really... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. The fucking glass here. So people don't have to. I'm going to throw the question out right now while I get the eggnog going. Vaney, what's mm. your fucking most memorable favorite Christmas gift that you got as a kid? Oh, boy. Tyler, now you think about that. Yeah. Take a moment. I'll, a- I'll, open, I'll, I'll, set, I'll set that up. I'll do some eggnog talk. So I got some golden eggnog here from Hood. Which Vaney, being a Massachusetts boy, will respect. Hood is the best eggnog. Out there. <laughs> I'm not putting any alcohol in the eggnog. I actually like it without alcohol. You're a purist. Yeah, me too. I am. Good. I really am. Uh, you know, I actually, this is going to sound fucking insane, but when I have hot dogs, I like to have the first hot dog without anything on it. Just the hot dog in the bun, just to, you know, respect the hot huh. dog. But anyway. All right, so there's the, you can see, there's the eggnog. Riveting radio, I'm sure, but this is the <laughs> yeah. this is the Christmas special. Maybe I'll cut this little video part out and post that uh, on the YouTube or uh, on the fucking Twitter X. But anyway, all right, Vaney, what's your most memorable uh, Christmas gift as a kid? It's hard to know what was Christmas and what was birthday, but the first thing that came to mind, and this was, def- was definitely Christmas, was the Star Wars AT-AT, A-T-A-T, because it was a it was a big carrier thing for Star Wars figures, and you could put your hand, it was battery operated, so you put your hand in it, you could control the head, and it would shoot the little lasers and would light up, you know, pew, pew, and it was like awesome. It was like this awesome Star Wars set, play set, I guess you would call it. All right. How yeah. old were you when you got that? 25. <laughs> Tyler, what about you? Uh, it was a telescope. A oh, small nerd. little refractor telescope. And that <laughs> set me off. Yeah, yeah. What can I tell you? I started young. You know, and the second grade teacher noticed that I had this problem. And so, anyway, science problem. <laughs> the, um, well, I think, you know, probably that she hated me because she was interested in science, but she didn't know anything. <laughs> and so, of course, here's the, the voice in the back of the room, you know, like the chat room today. But uh, anyway, I was a telescope. I got it about age 10 and uh, started me off on this journey that uh, has yet to end. And, wow. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, it, um, it was one one way you're, you're just kind of thrown in there. You don't know where things are in the sky, and so you just learn how to, to find all that stuff. And, uh, yes. it took me a while, but 
it was fun. I, I had a lot of fun with that thing. Nice. Wow. How about you, Tim? Well, I think I did a show a few years ago, I think, where we busted out these sort of things. Uh, so I was stumped at first. I suppose I, I, I it's recency bias, but uh, I got my rabbit, my late rabbit, uh, Sir Ralphus. I got him for Christmas uh, like 10 years, 10 or 11, 12 years ago. So that was, I had, you know, 10 years of great memories just from that gift. So it was, uh, it's one of those really awesome sort of uh, memories. So, yeah, that would be my, my favorite Christmas gift for now. Who knows what I'll get this year. Uh (laughs) Yeah, I had bunnies when I was a kid and I had a little hutch in the backyard, but 10 years for a rabbit. He had a good long life. Yeah, it was good. Good good care. Do you want to get another bunny or is it, has he spoiled bunnies for you? And you're like, I can't do it. No, I'm thinking about getting another one soon. So yeah, I could, uh, could use the companionship. (laughs) Oh, I know, right? The animal. Well, it's different when you have an animal than the animal. It's like you're around animals all the time, Vanny. You're like a duck farmer, right? So, and you, and now you're <laughs> also a you're a ho- also you're a hog wrangler. So you have to, that's right. You're... <laughs> you basically, yeah. live in a Disney film. Yeah, the the uh, correct term is duck wrangler. <laughs> okay, because he's oh. got to get them get them all in line for breakfast and. Uh, no, they mm-hmm. wrangle me. They get me in the That's how it goes. All right, Vanny. Now, Vanny, were you a big believer in Santa Claus as a kid? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? Until I still when? believe in Santa. I, now. Oh, yeah. I, well, like, all, if, yeah, yeah. There's you know, like, if you, see, if you see Santa on TV or something, aren't you still a little, like, ee? Yeah. Like, you no, could get I lost in, Santa. like, yeah, Santa's real, you know? Well, yes, that's true. That's true. Well, the mall in my town here is, like, one of the top malls in the country they actually filmed paul blart malkoff here believe it or not so Whoa. <laughs> yeah and there's santa i swear don't tell anyone i think that's the real santa because he like he looks real man he, they have you ever seen one of those real santas like a real mall santa the ones who are real it's like i don't know but <laughs> when when Vinny, when when did you when did you when did the Santa facade end for you for real? <laughs> I th- I think we had a teacher like it might have been like fourth grade fifth grade somewhere in there a teacher who was told us Santa isn't real. What and, a bitch. and everyone was like like half the class was like it was like an insurrection it was like you know it was yeah. like the Trump insurrection it was like. 40, 30 to 40 percent of the class was like ready to riot and the rest of them were like yeah our parents already told us that what are you moron are you morons believe in santa like yeah are you, you're the moron moron i get toys yeah <laughs> jesus yeah, of all the things gotta... that people hate teachers for it's never ruining christmas like that i mean that's weird except I for you on occasion I was told, like, by a friend. I think I had a friend in school who fucking was, like, just spoiled it. And I was like, what? And then he kind of explained it. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bummer in a way. <laughs> I'm still pretty sure we come from storks, though. That much I know. Well, that's, yeah. What about you, cool. Tyler? When did you, uh, were you a big Santa oh, kid growing God. up? Yes. Yeah, I, I loved it. My parents were very good at, at keeping that illusion going. And then, uh, just like you, I had a friend that, um, I think it was Easter. I went over and, and, you know, I said, hey, what did the Easter Bunny bring you? And then he he told me. <laughs> and so I, my mom <laughs> recounted this later. She she said, I, I came home and, I, you know, I had, obviously I had something on my mind and, and she said, well, what, you know, what's, what's on your mind? What's wrong? And I said, well, there isn't really an Easter bunny, is there? And there really isn't a Santa Claus, is there? And then she, she said, you know, she let me in on it. And they were, they weren't happy. My mom and dad weren't happy because they thought they could get me through another Christmas. Yeah. At that. So I must've been four or five. And Part then, of the reason know, I asked no, and then they swore me to secrecy because there are lots of other little punks around that I, you know. Yeah. And she said, "Don't you tell them? Don't you tell them? You you just let them, you know, yeah. do whatever they're going to do." And Tyler never broke that NDA, so nope. Take that as a lesson. <laughs> there you go. And so you couldn't skip that one yeah. out of him. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part of the reason I asked the question is maybe someday people will be listening to this show and we'll spoil Santa for some child, <laughs> child <laughs> up there. I was listening to the North America show and fucking... I can't the back seat. <laughs> well, yes. like, oh, if they're no. if they're listening to Banal of America at age four, there's something yeah. seriously wrong. <laughs> okay, seriously wrong. Yeah, it's how they teach their kids the F word and that there's yes. no Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, Sit down, God. Billy. I have something I need you to hear. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vanny, is it what is it like having how? Uh, well, you're you both have these. Hot, fucking climate. Uh, you know, non non really Christmassy Christmases uh, locales, if you will. Vanny, at least you, at least where you come from, has the song. <laughs> Heli right? Kalikimaka. Yes, so yes, <laughs> you can lean heavily on that. You have that as yes. your Christmas. Yeah, it's true. no one really pi- no one really pines for Arizona in the in over the. Holiday season. It's very. How do they celebrate? Are they just a lot of lights and shit? Yeah, it's just exactly like you would do any place else. And you have to remember, most of the people here, a very substantial fraction, are transplantees from other locations, and so they they're used to uh, Christmas, and so yeah. we have Christmas. Where I happen to live, we do get snow on occasion, but it's fairly rare. But if you want to. Yeah. No, you can drive two hours north, and you're you're in some snow. So we have the mountains. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's it's just pretty much as you would expect. Christmas trees. The other thing you have to understand is, it is winter here, dude. You know, it's yeah. below seventy. That's Arctic. So we've got the dug out the sweaters and everything, and and so yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Why is that? I was thinking that when I was out in California uh, last week. It's like it gets hot there, then at night it gets really fucking cold, and it's like, is that because there's no uh, humidity out here, or what? Why? Yes. Why is okay? That's yes, that way. makes a huge difference, and then you can always tell who's not from the area because they're running around with t-shirts on and sweating while you're <laughs> you're yeah. looking for another sweater to put on. So you do adapt, and it takes, uh, in my experience, it takes one year, and then you're adapted. Yeah, you can't stand the cold anymore. Now, Vaney, you're having Christmas in Hawaii. Mm. Did you ever tell the story about how you helped your friends in the fire? Because you wanted to talk about that when it happened. Um, I, I, have, I, I, told it, I told it on something, yeah. I okay, don't remember then forget what. it. All yeah. right. Go listen so to the you... something I told it on, too, everyone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're out of control. might have been that Paratopia episode that you're on, actually. I might have told it on that. I don't know. See, we're all on all these different shows. It's, un- it's unsavory. It's unsavory. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you this. Here's something new. Here's something exclusive. <clears throat> yeah. I can't believe I forgot to tell you this when you are asking me what's going on in my life. So a friend's wedding is coming up real soon. And yeah. going to the wedding will be at least... Two of the SEAL Team 6 guys who killed Osama bin Laden. No way! One of whom is staying here. Should ah. I, tr- I... I've got to try to interview them for an hour in doing or something. But uh, should I ask them about UFOs or is that a bridge too far? No, <laughs> or like, what do you think of what's going on? Like, even in terms of like, yeah, what do you yeah. think's going on with the military yeah. in this? Why not? Well, there are a couple of guys that would have a real feel for clandestine operation and what certain signals mean and what it means when Grush will draw the line but not quite cross it and dance on that. I'll bet they'd have a few things to tell you. Are they going to want to talk to you? They're going to want to talk to you. Start with that. No, no, no. You just (laughs) get in there and assume that they are here to talk to us. Okay. Yeah, so guys, like, I'm out here in Hawaii for my friend's fucking wedding, and this right. guy I'm staying with wants to interview me. Like, what the fuck? I mean, I just imagine if they don't want to talk, they're going to answer by just snapping my neck so fast I never know it happened. You know? Yeah, so it'd be oh. painless. <laughs> that makes Take sense. Take one for the team. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, Jeremy, come on. This this is a uh, golden opportunity uh, to... Uh, See if they will, in fact, give you some insights. You know, not asking them to uh, reveal anything uh, 
clandestine, and they, they might actually uh, kind of enjoy sort of talking on a subject that's not going to get them in trouble. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, we'll so wait, so you're not going to interview them about shooting Osama bin Laden? Yeah, but I, see, I'm not actually. I, I'm I'm kind of <laughs> interested in like the like what's going on in your head, like like how do you do that in, in with the weight of the situation? Is that a factor? Like I'm interested in sort of the consciousness and the psychology that goes into that, and then coming back to normal and like living. Like they prepare you to go do something like that. Do they prepare you to like come back and just live a life? <laughs> like, or are you like you come back and you're like, oh god, this sucks. You know, <laughs> I got to be well, normal. Yeah. And, like, people who, like, treat you as a hero in the abstract, but they don't actually know you, and they probably, you know, you know, I don't know. Like, all of that sort of, like, celebrity around stuff like that, is, does that even factor yeah, you, into their you lives? Heard. You always wonder, because it's always, it's always something we talk about as a public, but is it something that they give a shit about? Or are they like, yeah, I'm not a hero, I'm just a dude, you know? Yeah, it's like the Real Housewives. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly like that. That's that's what like, I was going look, for. I'm yeah. just a real housewife. I'm just a real housewife. <laughs> that's it. The <laughs> I don't know how. So I don't want to get too deep into the specifics. But so one of them is actually staying at your abode. Yeah, we have a a workshop. Let's call what I'm in now. The place that I'm in now. Okay. That yeah. uh, they can uh, stay in. <laughs> So, right. yeah. Hey, workshop. dude, you just solved your uh, feral animal problem. Put him in the workshop. <laughs> yeah. No, he knows what I'm talking about. We're not going to say anything further. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, what's funny is, so uh, it's my neighbor's, you know, friends. And he was like, yeah, this dude just decided he can make it to the wedding, but all the hotels and everything are booked. He's willing to stay in a tent out in the yard, but I was just wondering, and it was like, no, he's not going to stay in a tent out in the yard. Well, you know, have him stay here. But that's like, like, apparently they're, the dude's still in, like, I could sleep in a tent in the yard mode. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No rest wow. for the weary. <laughs> I'm well, just think... surprised. Yeah. I, I'm just skeptical, like, that you, that he, I guess, I guess kudos to you for asking him. I just wouldn't bother him to, like, Hey, can I interview you while you're staying in? Oh, well, you're I haven't in asked him in yet. my backyard, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't. A I haven't asked anybody yet. I'm just thinking, like, when I talk to them, I'm sure it will come up. What you know? What do you do? And they'll tell yeah. them. And, and then yeah, I'll don't like, like get off the plane and be like, wanna... "Hey, man, come here. Let's get let's get no, you no, into no. the workshop where I need to talk to you about all this." I get I'm a, not a I douche. Need to be debrief. <laughs> Tyler reacted like you were fucking had Mary Lou Retton staying with you. He was excited. <laughs> wow. Is that the yeah. is that the Mary Lou Retton response? Is that what that uh, is? Yeah, I guess yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you pulled that one from, Tim, but uh, it's good. Yeah. Hey, no, I know. Is she still alive? Did she make it through that that thing? I believe life. So. That thing called life. She got like really. No, sick she has for a very while. serious illness. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she's okay now. I relatively. think so, yeah. Ish. All right. Vaney, what do you want for Christmas? And I mean, I, I have everything, don't... Tim. Uh, hmm? Love. That's all I want. Love. Uh, but if I had to have something else. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> you mean like a video game? Like, what are you asking? I don't know. I don't know. Just anything. Just like if you, yeah. You can go to the store or whatever. I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> the hardest questions tonight have been the Christmas ones. Super Mario Wonder, everybody. That's that's what I would like. So everyone, send me a copy, and then I'll have like fifty copies of Super Mario Wonder. I don't know. What is Super uh, Mario Wonder? It's a new video game. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. No, that no. Was I think I think I'm getting everything that I need, and and a couple yeah. of things that I want. And you, you reach know. a certain age where it's like when you it's tough to like want something for Christmas because it's like generally you just go and buy the shit when you need it. So it's like, I'm yeah. not going to... But see, know, the thing about the you, nostalgia... Or when you want it, or when you want it. You know I, I mean? still have the nostalgia thing of just, like, saying, like, Santa's real. So, like, that's true. But on the other hand, if I get nothing, like, I'm going to be secretly pissed. <laughs> like, it's got to... It could be anything, but I've got to get something. I've got to unwrap something to, to trigger the little kid chemicals in my head. Go, <laughs> yeah! But it doesn't really matter what it is. Hmm. Yeah, no. As long as it's not socks or something that, you know, like that triggers the old, oh, my parents hate me tape. 
superfluous yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah, like I'm in the same kind of boat in a way where it's like, as I was thinking after I said that to you, I'm like, what do I want for Christmas? I'm like, fucking just a new TV. I just have been lazy and I haven't bought the new TV and it's like dying <laughs> on me. I'm waiting now. I'm looking at the sales. I'm just going to buy that and like put a fucking bow on it. <laughs> so... <laughs> I want the SEAL Team 6 interview. That's what I want for Chris. There you go. Oh, there gosh. you go. Is there anything in particular you, you want, Tyler, a new, a new golf ball catching a <laughs> bag or anything? Maybe one uh, of the no, monograms? No. Well supplied. Uh, although last year, uh, I got socks. And they were, <laughs> so you they are weren't your average. Okay. No, no. These were these were good socks. They had UFOs on them mm. and rockets. Uh, and we well, remember Aaron Gullius had some socks and that set yeah. me off. And, and so I said, OK, Katrina, my wife's name is Katrina. I said, this, this is what I need for Christmas. <laughs> so she got me three pair. Not just like his, of course. You know, I, don't, you I, have have, your own. I have to compete. Yeah. But uh, so uh, I just asked the grandkids for cinnamon rolls and root beer. Cinnamon rolls. What about you? Should yeah. Next time, ask them for a, a gift card to Nothing Bunt Cakes. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. I've forgotten. You about still that. have time. It's I still have time. I, I'm yes. going to change the order. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Saved Christmas, Tim. Well, well. Thank you. Try. Did any wow. of us ever get COVID? Because I never did. Knock on. Nope. Wood. Not to my knowledge. Uh, a wow. lot of people around me got it, but uh, I when thought I, you did get it. Oh, maybe it is a hoax. When I, I know, yeah. so I, that's I was just going to say that. <laughs> oh Christ! I, just I lost had the symptoms. <laughs> well, I had symptoms once, and and I did test. And it was right after Katrina got it, and I never yeah. never tested positive. So, uh, to yeah. my knowledge, no. We're just unpopular people. We don't have a lot of friends. I think. Well, I don't do anything. <laughs> Yeah. We're well, lazy. Carol and I Basically. still wear masks when we go out. So, yeah. oh, like, really? When we go to the store or the post office, yeah. Yeah. When when we travel, uh, on getting on and off the plane, we have masks on. And there's oh, really? practically nobody else that does. So, yeah, I that's, yeah, I know. Yeah. I watched. Uh, when I was traveling just recently. I looked around and I was like, oh, no one's really, uh, you know, no one's really wearing masks. So, yep. But you know so the guys, people that are. Did you get your boosters? No. I'll be honest. Oh. I, oh. I, what? No, I did get the boost, but I got yes. the first two. It's like Marvel movies, man. <laughs> 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 okay, I can't Understood. keep up. I can't keep up. And so I got the first two, the original first two, you know, like Godfather 1 and Godfather 2. Okay, I got the two. The two, you know, the pillars. It's all built upon the, the original two. Then I got the boost, and then I, then I'm like, I'm out. I can't, you know. Yeah, because after that, they could be putting nanobots in it. So why would you? It's just, yeah. I should get another boost, but I'm kind of like lazy about it, I guess. It's been long enough that you might want to consider it. You know, yeah. the, as we talked about Omicron and son of Omicron, and and there are two. But we're down to like the next. Yeah, we're, we're now, way so. past that. So, uh, but, Maybe I'll is, get it for the holiday season. Did you get the flu vaccine? I never get the flu vaccine. Okay. All right. Another good decision. <laughs> for, no, for no particular reason, just because. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I sensed that there was. Did, it was kind of, you know, <laughs> I never really get sick. I always thought the flu vaccine was just a scam because I grew up getting the flu all the time. So why would the. Who needs a vaccine? You just get the flu and you live with it. Yeah, exactly. I do. I kind of feel that way too, Tyler. I mean, I'm well, getting older and I lead yes. a, a, rough, a ruffian's lifestyle, but I still, uh, I think I can. I think I can make it through a flu still. We'll see. Knock on wood again. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> on tonight's been all American, been all tempts fate. Looking for Christmas. Jesus Christ. No, you're absolutely right. That uh, You live with it when you're young, basically, unless it's some kind of strange strain. Uh, but as you age and uh, uh, with bad habits, that would include smoking. Yeah. yeah drinking. Uh, you're at, at risk. The drinking probably no, is in your favor. Keeps the vasculature uh, going. So, so, yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly. So, no, so you're <laughs> balancing. For those of you who didn't see, Tim, Tim made a gesture with his hands as if he were doing a scientific chart of the word vascular. <laughs> <laughs> and then said exactly. Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> oh. Oh. And he speaks okay. at all. He does. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where the hell were we? Is there anything you want for Christmas, Tyler? Is there anything you fucking could need? Not really. I'm, I'm at that age, just like you said, if I need something, I, I can go get it. And I uh, don't need that much. Uh, so that's why I say cinnamon rolls and root beer. And that's, that's but now bunt cakes. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll we had a good run with update. That, nothing bunt cakes. Yeah. You know, the only disappointment was that they never became a sponsor and it's hard to understand why they didn't want their name associated with the COVID cast. Corona you know? cast. The Corona, the Corona cast. cast. Why, why the hell wouldn't anybody just that leave That was a lot that? of fun. I'm going to go wicked. Well, I'm going to take us I'll take us on a sad note, but I want to mention this because Vaney can speak to this. And I apologize for I, This is fucking, this is like Christmas party shit. Uh, when we had the Corona cast, a frequent caller was Carol Rainey. And Carol Rainey passed away earlier this year. And Carol was friends with, uh, integral with a lot of the Emma Wood stuff and with Vaney's early work. And uh, and she was a really cool lady, man. That's just, you know, I just remember her calling in and we were all hunkered down during that time. And she was a regular listener, a regular caller. So, you know, Vaney, you had a lot of dealings with her, I take it, right? Indeed. Yeah, talk a little bit about Carol because, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I really didn't know her very well. I only knew her as a caller on the Corona cast, but she was adorable and fun. And, you know, we had, you know, remember that, Tyler? Oh, God, yeah. 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 Um, but like I said, you, you had a lot of dealing with her uh, back, I guess, early in the in the veiny, you know, in, in your earlier era, if you're like Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh yeah i i mean she, she was a pain in the ass oh, she was also she was also um uh very brave as i think we all know to have come out and f- helped out emma woods who she didn't know um simply because i think she saw this woman taking Arrows from Bud Hopkins and David Jacobs and their their monkeys, their their monkey affiliates, um, and she thought that that was unfair, and so she decided to be an actual ufological whistleblower and blow the whistle on what she saw in Bud Hopkins' research and his interactions with David Jacobs and her interactions with David Jacobs, and she knew she would get shit on, and she did it anyway, and sure enough, she got yes. shit on. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, she was like a heretic. eternal credit for that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So she was also really yeah. smart and interesting in like ordinary ways, you know, too. Like, that's the thing that's interesting to me is th- there seems to be like two, two sort of, I don't know, strands of people in this. Like one is like hoity toity cultured people like Carol Rainey and, and, uh, Tyler Coke John here. And then the other are like, you know, no nothing schmucks. <laughs> like, those are the two flavors of. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like me and Tim who are anomalies. Like some, we're somewhere, we're not hoity toity. We're kind of <laughs> schmucks, but we're not no nothing. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we, we occupy all of it. We have the, the you know, we're Renaissance men. But, uh... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I do want to say, because this is funny, like the, fir- the first time I ever met Carol Rainey, like I was. Uh, I think I was, it was, it was either promoting my book or my DVD at the time. I, I think my, I think my DVD and, um, and I started talking about, yeah, I started talking about her, the book she wrote with Bud Hopkins sight unseen. And I was like mm-hmm. quoting from it or something to make a point of my own. And I didn't realize that I was talking to her. Like I had no idea what she looked like. And so I was like, actually sort of talking to her and arguing the point with her or making a point from her book and not knowing it. And uh, just like when she told me who she was, I thought that was hilarious. Like that was, that was the way we met. It was like her saying, well, that's not the way we meant it. And I'm like, 
yeah, but that's that's the way it is. Like, I don't remember even yes. what it was about. Yes. <laughs> and I guess we hit it off from there. Well, there you go. Well, but she actually you know. came to Hawaii and spent some time here. I don't know if anyone knows oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah, like when you? I first moved here. Yeah, when I first moved here, we were going to write, I think we were writing together a book about Emma Woods' case or with Emma Woods. I can't remember. Uh, it's, it's a freaking blur at this point, but yeah, obviously that time. didn't quite work out. Uh, or maybe she was writing the book with Emma Woods at that point. I don't remember. I don't know. But anyway, Emma ended up publishing her own book because who wants to deal with us, right? So it's like, who wants to deal with those two <laughs> rejects? Uh, but yeah, so she stayed here for a little while. So um, that that was an interesting time. Uh, so yeah, we got to know each other in yeah. various ways. And um, I don't know. I just think... <sighs> I just hope that she knew at the end that what she did, at least in terms of this stuff, wasn't for nothing. Like, it was actually yeah. valuable and that pre- people appreciated her. That's, yeah. That's my hope. Well, that's I, that's why I brought her up, in a way. You know? That's why I brought her up. Because it's like, I, I remember what she fucking did. And I we, we appreciate it. So, Tyler, anything to add? Yeah, uh, actually, Carol Rainey is the reason that I'm here with you guys today. Oh, wow. Because I saw a side unseen, and I thought, whoever wrote this, and I didn't know anything about Bud Hopkins at, at all at this point, they knew a lot of science. They got a lot of the science right. And I, she posted something on Peritopia, on the uh, after show area, whatever, so, I, oh, she must have a website, and she did, and I, I sent her a message, and I said, you know, you've got all this stuff, but you left out the uh, part about if you know that these things are transgenic, you you can find those. You can, you can you know, if you have any information about that, and, and she was very intrigued, so she started emailing me. But she also told either Jeff and or Jeremy uh, about me saying, hey, there's this dude out there you might want to talk to. Because yeah. at that time, everything I would post at Paratopia would be just roundly ignored by Jeff and right, Jeremy. Right. So, yeah. uh, so she well, got, we've seen got how, We've seen attention. how Jeremy feels about people in the comments section earlier. You, they, 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 now, now it's karmic, actually, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. It's come back around, that. you see? <laughs> Tyler Coke, Tyler's writing you these thoughtful comments and shit, and you're like, I don't have time for that guy. And now you're now 2023. You've got people being like, "Fuck you, Vanny! Fuck you! Why are you yeah. hosting a show?" No, Ty, people like Tyler have ruined commenters for me. Where it's like, why aren't you more like Tyler? What the yeah, hell? Sure. What's wrong with you people. So yeah, anyway, so she, that's how you guys connected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just a happenstance that I, I sent her a message, and she was interested. And she, of course, she wanted to find out all about how if you had a, a gene how you could find these things and i said geez we do it all the time in the lab we have uh, mice that have human uh, genes that we put in them and then we have to be sure when we're doing the experiments that they actually in fact have the right genes and it's just yeah. simple and it started from there and we kind of went back and forth about how you could do certain things what what were the possibilities and she was very intrigued by all that but she did a good job of writing that book. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're kind of, you're, yeah, you kind of ruined the whole hybrid thing for me. <laughs> In general, like, anytime I hear, like, anyone who's like, I have a half alien baby or whatever, I'm like, oh, man. Like, Tyler, you know, they already explained that they would know that. They yeah. Really- and it, it was uh, something that the field didn't really want to take up. And that um, Bill Schalker had talked about this uh, hair of the alien that, that yeah. he, he had examined years ago. And I saw that in a MUFON journal and I uh, thought, geez, you know, why aren't people picking up on this? And then I happened to get in touch with Carol and it just kind of snowballed from there. Did you ever find out why people didn't pick up on that? Yeah, they didn't want to. Why? <laughs> because it doesn't work. Doesn't oh. fit their hypothesis, uh, and so I mean, did uh, anything it, ever come of the hair of the alien that you know of? Like, what? Well, what it depends. Came of that research. Uh, uh, Bill was, uh, by the way, he was very uh, cooperative, uh, answering questions and things over email. Some people are not, uh, and that includes even prominent scientists 
by the way, but uh, he was, he answered all the questions and we went back and forth. And I don't interpret the data that he had quite the same way that I don't think it necessarily indicates alien, you know, but um, uh, no, that's, that's. Yeah. So why is that? How is it that you can interpret it one way where it's not necessarily something and someone else can look at it and go, Eureka, we have aliens here? There's an alternate way to, to say, yeah, but some people actually will have this particular finding with, mitoc- I think it was mitochondrial DNA. It's been a long time since I've, I've looked at it. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that it came from uh, something uh, even stranger. It, so is I, it the same way? Is it the same way with the metals that we're hearing have isotopic ratios that are found nowhere on earth and it can't possibly have been constructed here, whatever it is. Like, I know you're not a metallurgist or anything, but do you think if you were, if you looked at that, you would come to the same conclusion? <laughs> Pretty sure not. Uh, and the reason Wait, how I say does that, that work, is it just simply that we're not experts and so they can pull one over on us? Like why would Jacques yeah. Vallée and, and those guys do that? Yeah. Like what, do, they, do you think they believe it or do you think they're pulling one over on us? Well, I think they probably do uh, feel it's it's compelling. And the, the, what I would say is, well, then get it to somebody that can really tell you what's going on. And uh, to yeah. some degree, Dr. Gary Nolan did that. Uh, I didn't think that they had anything really earth shaking. That the type of article that they published, unless you have something more that I haven't seen, uh, was more of a review article without a whole lot of primary data. But if you got the object, and this was from the uh, Council Bluff Is that alien. Oh, well, no, alien, no. Uh, the uh, this was metal or slag or something from the Council Bluff sighting in 1976, I think it was, um, yeah. and it came into um, Dr. Valet's hands somehow, and and then they they tested it. But if in fact you think you've got the uh, the the smoking gun, the actual evidence or whatever. Man, I would get it into the the greatest expert's hands that you could get it to <laughs> as fast as possible. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it reminds but wouldn't me Gary of, uh... Nolan say that that's him? No, he's not a metallurgist either, and he he had uh-huh. the presence of mind to get someone to collaborate with him who had some yeah, expertise. Man. Yeah. Well, but... no, but I remember him <laughs> saying he looked at it or something. Like I thought he was the dude, but I guess okay. So if he collaborated with someone, he facilitated it. Yes. What did that guy say? What did the or gal? What what did the metallurgist say or whatever the I, expert? I, yeah, Manny, a metallurgist can be a man or a woman. Come on. There you go. <laughs> I <laughs> said man or woman. We'll have you to. Correct we'll have, I heard. I they. Heard what did they stuff. say? Hey, okay. <laughs> hey, that, there you go. There you go. <laughs> we'll have to actually look at the paper again because it's been a while since I've looked at it to see what the the um, conclusions were. But you really, if you have it and you have the, the feeling that it's truly anomalous, then you really don't want to stop with that one stupid paper. I'm sorry, not stupid paper, with that one contribution stupid to scientific paper, knowledge. Sure. Wow. No, sorry. No, it's, that's, that's too judgmental. <laughs> Tyler um, Cope, John, calls paper stupid. Uh, no, no, no. Paper no, please, responds. Please, please nah, expunge nah. this. But, but, Rock, paper, uh, scissors over here. Jesus. Uh, you, would, you would get it into the hands of the National Academy and get people to weigh in on it. If, if it really is truly something that reveals a uh, truth that we don't have. And that, yeah, that's so the thing that used to talk with Jack Brewer all the time is that these scrupulous – Avoidance of the Nobel Prize by the ufology right. community is absolutely yeah. astonishing. And it's so amazing. what? They have to, well, you make it sound like you have you can just fucking go down and fill out an application, Tyler. It's like not like the. <laughs> you ever watch the know, Three Stooges? They, maybe they just don't pay attention. I think to I'm watching the, it now. What are you? The <laughs> subject. Oh uh, well, yes, we are. <laughs> Didn't Gary, Gary Nolan did? Is he the one who looked at the Atma Attica, yes. whatever, Blue whoever Blue the mummy? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, could you? Uh, I mean, Tyler, you're a doctor. Again, I come back to. Do, does it make sense to you that a colleague would look at something like that, realize that he has either had the wool pulled over his eyes by one Stephen Greer, who apparently he trusted in the first place, or just realize like, ah, eh, this is human remains? And he would still be so intrigued by this field that he would go on to then look at um, metals well, or, try, or try to get dude. someone to. Oh, he is? Yes. Yeah. He had some kind of experience, so he's a true believer. That's what uh, I understand. Okay. 
Yeah. So, um, wait, so. Is, is there a thing where if you're an experiencer, you have to trust the most obvious charlatans on the planet in stupid materials that, that uh, promote a fantasy? No, no, um, no. I don't is know. That, let's, let's go back and this review, so true, shall we? I'm not an experiencer. The aliens <laughs> have deemed me unworthy of, of me, their fucking attention. So me too. Thanks a lot, aliens. Yeah. Well, maybe because they're. they're Pope John too. I mean, if if you don't want to disclose yourself, you go. <laughs> I guess you go to the people who are going to keep up the ruse, right? <laughs> like the experiencers. Uh, no, no. Are... I want to disclose myself, but there's nothing to disclose. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's why I'm going to the Big Island. Okay. Well, get go. over I'm here. After I know. Team Six is done with you, you guys should both yeah, come. Should. We should have like this a little like, BOA mini party over no, here. No, no, we when actually, we get Tyler. You know what? We we should talk about that, Tyler. Is there enough room for me and Tyler? Because yeah, yeah, there <laughs> is. <laughs> How do you know, Tyler? You've never been out there. Oh, I've been there. I went to his wedding. He's been here. Yeah. What? Yeah, we this were sitting like the, there waiting for you for hours. Oh, and finally Vegas got place the is like the Tonight Show, and I'm missing out. I need to be out there. You've got <laughs> Carol Rainey. You've got SEAL Team 6. Tyler Surf That's true. I had Whitley here. Let's see. We had uh, yeah, Dennis right. Paquetta. Join the crowd. I'm going to get on and start looking at plane tickets. But if, if we could go back to Dr. Nolan just, just sure. for a moment. Sure. He's the Maybe one in paper here. you said was stupid. When you talk about Ada, the extraterrestrial. <laughs> he was yes, just that's the one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> no, nah, I know. I'm just fucking with it. But if you go back to that particular paper of Ada, uh, that Gary Nolan, in his own way, is the most dangerous man in ufology because he Jesus. took the idea of Ada, the extraterrestrial, and he right. demolished it. He ah, demolished okay. it. Okay, boom, not coming back. That concept is dead. Now, when he extrapolated from that, I don't agree with with his findings or his uh, conclusions after that point. But in terms of taking the evidence, examining it as a scientist would, he did exactly what you would want a scientist to do, and he did it well. And so, bam, yeah. done. There you go. So I think the thing is, is that if you give him items, to examine, you have to be very prepared for the idea that he will do a good job on it. Okay, that he he will give you yeah. the the facts as, as he finds them. He's not going to experience her or or whatever his angle is. Uh, he he does the job in that regard, and so kudos, you know, for that particular right. part. Some of the other parts we don't agree, but that's science. Okay, I mean that's the we. we kill each other the stupid know. parts yeah no we yeah this, it, it, well no the sorry <laughs> yeah really okay no, send the now. emails to <laughs> kim this is the part show. where he was like duh i'm a scientist and they committed that to <laughs> paper yeah that <laughs> part but i'll also tell you that we had a, a guy that worked in the anatomy department and i actually had the picture of adam and i was trying to match it you can do the um, image search on google this is back in the day and I found something quite similar, and I found a guy in the Netherlands. And I couldn't get to him, but I got to some people that, that were working with him, and they said, yeah, we, we think they knew exactly what it was. Ten seconds later, a guy from the anatomy department walks in and said, what, what are you looking at this? And, and you know, he said, that's, that's the remains of a, a miscarried fetus. And who's got? And the first thing he said is, and who has custody of the remains? Because those are human remains. And, boy, at that point, I hadn't talked to the, the lead scientist in the Netherlands yet. I got in touch with a couple of people who were looking like they were teetering on the idea of declaring Ada as a real extraterrestrial. And I said, you know, here's what this guy told me. He happens to be an expert in the field. You might want to think about this before you go too far out on a limb. And that, that's, yeah. that's where we left it. So anyway, wow. but yeah, the most dangerous it's man in ufology, man. Dr. Gary Nolan. Well, he should hands get down. his hands on those, uh, on those, Mummies down there. That, that yeah, you know what? They're not going to let him get within ten thousand feet of them. <laughs> yeah, no. Because he'll just kick the That's crap the out of them and be done with it. It's like just give the alien bodies to someone other than, like, you got to stop doing the test yourself, dude. He's coming well, back. He's like, I, we did the test. It's alien. It's like, all right, just, can we see it? Can we, have, can we have the alien to like confirm? It's like, no, no, no don't worry about it. It's alien. Well, you guys probably remember Lloyd Pye. And he had the, the Yes, I was going to mention Lloyd Pye when we were talking about all this.
Yeah, and I got in, in touch with him, and I had some suggestions as to things he could do beyond just doing uh, sort of the standard stuff. And and he was interested, but uh, what he did at at the time when he started, I had a great hope that he would go ahead and and do a creditable job. He had some collaborators and basically say, this is what the data takes. This is as far as we can go. But I, I felt like he was trying to stretch. You know, I mean, it's his data. It's his, it's, it's his publication and whatnot. But I, in the end, I was a little disappointed. He was quite angry with me, frankly. So, but, you know, they asked me an opinion and, and uh, I'll tell you what I think. And you can, you know, Wait, get to so the bank. Lloyd, Lloyd, Lloyd. Jesus, what? Yeah, that's Is that my Lloyd phone. Pye? Well, I hope not. Because <laughs> Are you God kidding knows. me? No, I'm not. That's your phone? Yeah. You go out in public with that on your phone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with your I'm with your UFO socks? That's what that's fine. Well, what, what's your point? Like, that was terrifying. That sounded like <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Wow. It, it, the way, the yeah. God, we, like, treat you, we treat you with such reverence, and this is who you are. <laughs> yeah, what's your point? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, what can I tell you? So Lloyd probably got mad at you, is what you're saying. Yeah, he, he wanted me to... Um, uh, I forget how he put it. <laughs> with the alien... No, all, uh, with yeah, I think the, we all know how he put it. The hybrid... <laughs> Uh, he's saying, "Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater," and because uh, uh, that's when I was beating hybrids into the dirt. And um, uh, anyway, uh, he got sure, over it. Yeah, yeah. It passed. That was that was during your hybrid beating era. Yeah, yeah, it was the you know prime time. Yeah. Now you've moved on to the golf ball era. I have a, I have a, I'm going to do a listen to this. I got to came up. Well, this is an old idea, but we're going to revive it. Um, cause it's POA revival. Um, so for Christmas, I'm going to ask my family for a 23 and me, Tyler, and then I'm going to pay it forward. And as, as my, as my gift to you also, we're going to do that. But all of America origins show where, uh, we'll break down my, my genetic background and all that. Although I don't know if I want you like, you know, Telling me I have juvenile diabetes or something, so I, I might just skip it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That would be bad. Uh, okay, you weren't anywhere Tyler. near New Jersey, were you, Tyler? What, what's the over Wait. under on over fifty percent Neanderthal? Take bets yeah, right now. The, how much? How much do. Neanderthal has been all having him? Let's take bets. Eighty. Wow. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> Jesus. What are you saying about my mother? <laughs> well, see, there you go. This is all the interesting things you're going to find out, including relatives that you didn't know you had. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, That's going to be, it's going to, we're going to do it. We're going to do the long discussed uh, special episode, Banal Origins. Okay. And we're going to uh, yeah. dig into my, my genetic background. Maybe if it's, maybe if people like it enough, we'll force Vaney to do a sequel and we'll do Vaney Origins. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, we'll find out. Wow. Yeah, we'll find out your whole family tree and all that. Well, you know what? You could, <laughs> this yeah. sounds horrifying. That's what I like about it, actually. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. Know. Turns out John Wayne Gacy is my second cousin. This is it's, awesome. Um, well, uh, one can hope that you, you have some kind of uh, luminaries. Uh, you, you may find yeah. it's uh, a mixed bag. But uh, promise me that you will look at all the disclaimers and whatever you're signing away. Yeah, what were you saying about New Jersey? Well, uh, that's where the the guy, the um, New York architect, wasn't he disposing of bodies near his home? Oh, in yeah, Jersey? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and they, it, it, long story short, is that they were able to track him down through a combination of, of efforts. Oh, they track. Yeah, they catch people all the time with that. Luckily, I have not committed any crimes using my DNA. And if anyone else uh, in my family tree has, fuck them. I don't care. Like, okay. All right. <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, like, but do, like, do read, yeah, so. read what they can do with it, what the future is for that, because they, I think part of the, of the deal is that uh, future research will be done. They're building their database and hopefully all the data will be anonymized and, uh, and used uh, appropriately. And I think there's no reason to think that it won't. Uh, but, you know, if you make friends with Dr. Gary Nolan, maybe he'll just give you the whole genomic sequence. 
my genomic sequence? Yeah. I bet he could I get it done. What the fuck would I even do with that? <laughs> Hang it on your wall. Three Jesus. billion base pairs of Tim Banal. I'm sure there's some place that'll do that for you. But I don't need Gary Nolan to do it. It's probably like through uh, Etsy or some shit. Hey, well, no, you, you can you can uh, volunteer. The military has a million. Uh, <laughs> what are you trying to get profiles? me mixed up with? I just I'm just gonna do 23 and Me, Tyler. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's it what just, you think you're doing, but an actual oh, fact. Here we go. Yes, yeah. but <laughs> it turns out, but my DNA <laughs> being used for government super soldiers or whatever. Sure. Yes, I I will. If it's good gonna, with that. Yeah, Vane, okay. if you're a G.I. Joe fan, you'll know like how they made Serpentor. They took all the DNA. <laughs> yeah. the, different, the different like tyrants of world history and they put it in together and made Serpentor. That's fine. If the government okay. wants to use okay. some outstanding but all gene that would be like the perfect thing they need for a super soldier, I, I'll release my DNA for that. All right. So we're really, really <laughs> pushing the depths and breadth of science. Here. I guess. But the, the point is, sometime like in six months, I'll have you on the show. Well, I'm going to try and do it where I don't see the results ahead of time. So we're going to. Wait, I got to ask a DNA question, you know, because sure. that's been over the last at least, I don't know, half decade to a decade. DNA upgrades or something, illumination has been a factor of the new age and ufology. Like they're, they're somehow aliens are fiddling with people's DNA, extracting something, putting something in. I don't know what. I don't know why they've adopted DNA as a thing, except that it became a news item for a while. Is there anything in that that could be uh, proven true or false in those those sorts of claims of um, DNA manipulation? If, in fact, uh, somebody came in and said, I'm 50% alien, yeah, you could go ahead and the markers will be very different uh, in that particular person because we would have genes that we would have, or basically DNA sequences, not necessarily just genes. What about activations when people, and I talk about DNA activation, like the, the, the Galactic Federation of Light has activated their DNA in some way. Is that something? Just, Jesus, well, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's abstract, but say like, uh, <laughs> would there be a what way to fuck? know? Like, like, is there, I guess what I'm asking is, is there a correlation between uh, someone having, for instance, a psychic power and something in the DNA that gets manipulated? Or if you want to make it something basic, like, obviously, psychic power is a little difficult, but, like, could you, could you stick a needle in the DNA and, like, make someone's arm move or take away their ability to move their arm? Like, is there that one-on-one -on -one correlation with, like, DNA and your you know, functioning in the world? Sometimes there, there are, there are single genes that can, that can change. Shut up, uh, Tim. Tim's nodding his head. <laughs> he looks disgusted. He's crinkling his nose at me. <laughs> yeah, but it's like fucking Krampus over there. We, we Shut don't up. care we about do. him. This this is, is, what are you, this is comic book shit. This is this like, is, this is like fucking, can you, can you go to a fountain and you're arguing with a loved one and you say, I wish you knew what my life was like. Could like they switch bodies? Like that is this is like the yes, that's a great, excellent <laughs> question. We have a doctor here who can answer it. <laughs> so yes, and uh, fuck you, Merry Christmas. Oh. Yes. When I go out to Hawaii, Vanny and I get into a big fight, and we're like, ah. Oh, no. so, oh God. Uh, so what? Yeah. Oh, Vanny, so Vanny wants to know: Can people like can you manipulate DNA? What, on demand? Is for a real-world outcome. How about that? For a bio, for a real-world biological outcome. Like, yeah. this link that people make, is that a thing that is even true? Well, it, it a lot, mostly fantasy, but there have been attempts to uh, work on sickle cell by uh, putting in basically new genes that work better, and there's some hope that that actually is kind of <laughs> uh, working. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, you know, this is remarkably like being a professor, Again, looking out at the classroom, ah. <laughs> seeing you two interact. You right, know, stick my tongue out at Tim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, you, there are some some things that that can be done. Uh, we've had uh, good and bad outcomes. Uh, one of the problems with some of the uh, current uh, gene manipulation methods, there's a, a protocol called CART, C A R T, Chimeric Antigen Receptor Therapy, T cell receptor therapy. I know and, how to spell um, cart. 
the um, <laughs> the this car key. The uh, oh. <clears throat> the um, voila. Well, the upshot is, and, and there have been other things where uh, some of the protocols have maybe induced cancer themselves. And so they've had to work backwards on these things, try to figure out. And so there, there are still a lot of, lot of problems to be worked out. But the, the dream and the hope is still real. And uh, it, it's advancing. It really, truly is. Yeah, but this is uh, unrelated to Vaney's question in a way, but similar somewhat, where it's like, they always talk about how they're going to grow organs and all kinds. They always talk about great shit that is just down the line. It's like, we just keep getting older and shit. We're not going to, you know, I'm not seeing any lung factory or whatever that I could <laughs> yeah. okay. call well, upon or the whatever. Me. A new liver. They can't just go, well, well, now we grow them. It's like, some, like, someday we'll be able to grow them. It's like, well, you've been saying that for years, dude. Grow, grow. Yeah. And there are people that are applying stem cells. Uh, uh, clinically, that that's one that really the stem cell, I would call it craze, really got ahead of the you know the the science in in many ways. But uh, there are there are reasons that to keep looking at these things. It's just that you're right; they're not going to necessarily be there in two years. But uh, you could maybe talk to your doctor and get him to give you a compound known as Rapamune, and uh, uh, that would be rapamycin, and a lot of people feel like that's the elixir of eternal life. Uh, be careful, oh, Jesus. Be careful. Everything has side effects. Okay, you probably get it on the black, on the yeah, dark the internet that Jeremy hangs out. Oh my on. god, maybe that could yeah, be your. In fact, you can get it from my website. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Sixteen ninety five for sure. Wow. Yeah. Bitcoin. Um, by the way, you. I wrote that blog post for you, Jeremy, and uh, you know nothing. Uh, what one is that? <laughs> it's about dogs yeah, on gotta... Easter Island. It's the last one. So uh, dogs on Easter Island. What about them? It, well, the, the, we're doing. It would look like we're actually poised to do some experiments on longevity uh, extension in dogs, companion animal dogs, and it's, it's, it's coming very close. Despite who's some... we like scientific community. Yeah, not these you. E like not you're not evil scientists <laughs> behind the scene type. All right. Well, you said we. Like I'm imagining. You know, you have like. <laughs> Your garage has like five or six dogs in it that you're fucking. I, I don't let anybody in my garage for good oh, reason. Shit. It's full of golf balls, man. Golf balls. It's are, worth yeah. money. Uh, so anyway, that said, there will be. Uh, it looks like almost certainly some studies where they start to uh, chronically treat dogs and hope that they can uh, delay the aging process. You know, dog yeah. years are are pretty fast, and uh, so we'll see. And if that succeeds, that feels then, like a dad joke. It almost does, yeah. But yeah, was that? But are you just being smart, smart Alec? <laughs> so anyway, uh, stand by. All right, but you okay. can you can get uh, prescriptions well, off label. Uh, so uh, there you go. See, that's too way too optimistic for you, Tyler. That's way too you know what's uh, what's going to happen. They're all going to no, die of terminal diarrhea when you wipe. Well, out your no. I, what I'm interested in, since I haven't talked to you in a while, is uh, you must be absolutely because I know you. You must be terrified about AI, right? Are you are you like ready to, you know, tear down the machine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I tell you that after the week that OpenAI had right before Thanksgiving with uh, basically their leader Sam Altman being deposed. Yeah, the whole thing was deposed, weird. Yeah. I, I think you, you look at that and and now this is just an opinion of somebody that's a, a true outsider. I look at that and say that the corporate forces probably won and the people that were trying to control uh, the open AI board lost and more may come out yet. But I, right. I think honestly, the, the real worry in my particular situation or opinion is that uh, Microsoft and Google or whatever, they're racing each other. And that's not going to be good for the rest of us. I'm afraid that the safety is going to fall out the wayside. And, uh, and right now, you know, large language models, okay. But the field is advancing so incredibly quickly that it's just breathtaking how fast these things can go. And it in fact, very, uh, well, it, much bigger just in the last, like, two unbelievable. Years. So the picture that I put in the, that last blog post was, um, generated by the uh, Microsoft uh, image creator. The, the upshot are basically derivative of DALL-E. 
and you just type in what you want. And so I literally typed in dog with Easter Island statues, stars in the background. 15 seconds later, there it is. Wow. It's unbelievable. Like three different artists. Well, see, this is the other thing is, that, um, okay, if you look at it, you know, how did they train <laughs> these models? Where did they get that Using stuff real from? pictures. Uh, hopefully public domain, right? I'm sure that they, everything they used was public domain, except oh, for the sure, stuff yeah. that they scraped from your writing. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So then you've got this sort of oh, situation. That's true. Yeah, your shit. Uh, they, I bet you that is part of the thing where it's like if you put your stuff on Facebook, they can use it for that stuff. So. Ah, oh, well, yeah, uh, Facebook will use it for their purposes, and you agreed to that. It's almost certainly in their terms of, of usage. Yeah. Well, but the, the thing you have to look at is that, okay, these guys are, um, they're incredible. They're brilliant. They've had all the success. And how do they do that? Oh, yeah. Copyright. Oh, the hell with that. That's not convenient. See ya. So what else is yeah. going to be convenient? I don't want to find out. Yeah, the whole thing's weird, but I don't, it hasn't really affected me yet that I can tell. So it's It will. Kinda, yeah. It will. If you're a content creator, uh, the Which next step will be they go and instruct the program. Uh, oh, scrape all the links. Get all the links. No, yeah, no, I've seen some places that have articles that are written by AI already. And it's like, oh. But, you know, it's people, as long as there's like that disclaimer, people will kind of uh, be on the side of the humans. But I see what you're saying. They're going to slowly integrate it in where you're not going to really know. Well, the thing is, that that when it gets AI good written, enough, but, when you can't tell, uh, so somebody goes ahead and decides, I want to write a basic uh, sort of summary of the paranormal fields as, as it exists today. Whose database would you go to? It's a trick question. Be know. careful. I'd know. go to your YouTube collection, scrape all that material. Oftentimes, many other interviews, places. I, cer I certainly hope they wouldn't. <laughs> you've got a ton of material. <laughs> I would scrape all of that. A lot of the stuff. Scrape veiny stuff, too. Veiny stuff, too. And the interviews yeah, with Vaney the principals. deserves a scrape. In, in their own words, you know? Boom. You yeah. take that and then you say, okay, paraphrase this or give me a synopsis. And it's not going to be obvious that, you know, what they did. Uh, and then get yeah. a search engine optimization protocol that's better than yours. And they'll go to their site, not yours. Well. Well. You know, I'll see well, you in court. Well, yeah, okay. Good luck on that one. <laughs> but that's that's actually when you had the interview with uh, Jack Brewer and, and uh, Erica. I thought, yeah, wow. Uh, you know what? You're putting all that stuff out there, and you're just setting the table for uh, these machines to come and take it. Yeah, but then what's the alternative? Don't do shit. Password. Oh well, Tyler. You know, I belong to the masses. I have to do everything around here, Jeremy. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> care. I mean, really, I, I honestly, I, I like, as far as like, oh, what, they're not going to hear you? Nobody hears me anyway. Yeah. And like, like the people already trouble, buy the top that. of the Google search. <laughs> like that's already paid for, you know? Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. Jeez, Tyler. You know, well, we're, I, just, I, we're not, okay. we're not, you know, we don't like, <laughs> we don't give a fuck. We're just I'm like, more oh, concerned with, with the, the, the type of. AI art, it always seems to be like some sort of organic uh, serial killer looking thing. It's very like dark. They always, yeah, it's, a dark it's very dark and it's very like, like oh, let's take this cartoon. Like somebody sent me a, a cartoon of Jeff's logo for Paratopia, the eyeball, and they fed it into AI. And it came out like this gross human eyeball with dripping stuff. You know, like, like everything was like this realistic gross human eyeball art. And it's like, if that's... <laughs> If that's what AI thinks of us, <laughs> no, 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 it, it, you, 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 you command it, sir. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so you can tell it, so, yeah, more, you don't more creepy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until so it there, commands you. Well, so with the, with the, the present iteration in next week, it'll probably be uh, even more sophisticated. Uh, you can uh, ask it to do more, make it creepier make it darker, you know, all those things. And so actually with the one that I posted, the picture that I posted, I didn't, I thought it was too um, light. So I said, make it darker, make the background darker. Boom. It understands. Oh, the background. All right. 
Yeah. Could you imagine it's, it's, if... Yeah, go ahead. It, well, if the anti-trans people, and especially the ones who are, like, biblical about it, put as much energy into being up in arms about not being able to tell what a human is as opposed to who was born a certain gender. Like, where is the outrage of this? And yet there is an outrage of, like, that, which is kind of, you know, uh, tangential and less, but in the same category. Like, why are people up in arms about one thing and making it a political movement, but AI, it's like, eh, you're allowed to blur the lines. Hell, you're allowed to get rid of the lines. Hell, because not, we've all seen T2. Let's just do it, you know? Because like, why are we okay with that? Because they're not being told to be angry about it. Because they're not being told to be angry about it. So, you know. If they Can't they figure out the to be angry about it on their own? Can't we? No. no. <laughs> At what point can we just be angry about it on our own without, like, a, a, the word go from our favorite news source? You well, know? We're, you're talking about those people, so they need to be told to be angry about it. We, we, we mm. live in the real world where it's like, okay, we have real problems like climate. Uh, you know, fucking feral hogs running around Vanny's property. You know? <laughs> yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> I, I, I think you're right, Jeremy. I think, honestly, that a lot of people that are writing about it and reporting about it are uh, very savvy, technologically savvy. So they're not quite maybe as reticent as some of us. And that hasn't percolated down. But, mm-hmm. yeah, we need we need the... the uh, Flaming torches and pitch, pitchfork moments with the Luddites coming back and, and saying, I mean, oh, this is wait, the thing stop. that gets me is like science and technology people are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. You can do a large Haldron Collider, even if it means like, well, we don't know if we'll create a black hole, you know, like, but we'll, we'll risk it. Or like people who are creating mini black holes. And it's like, well, it's just a mini black hole. Odds are nothing bad will happen. (laughs) And, you know, because nothing bad happened yet, it's just like the drunk drivers here, you know, on the island where it's like, well, I'll go around five cars on a curve up a hill because I didn't die the last time I did it. It's like that's the way we treat science. And for some reason, the public doesn't care, even if it will kill us all. Like, we don't care. It's it's just not even on our radar, and I, I don't I don't get what that is. But all the petty shit, well, that's on our radar. Well, people just yeah, it's distractions. How you get by in life, I guess, right? It, the it, good thing about like look, like, yeah, but who cares if they make if they made a black hole, dude? We'd all die like those people in that submarine. We wouldn't even know what <laughs> happened, right, Tyler? Right, fine with right. doing that. <laughs> if it so advances funny, knowledge, funny. it's worth the it's well, worth the all, risk. Well, they'd all, they'd be sucked in too. So we'd all, you know, it'd be pointless. Yeah. But for one tenth of a second, they would know. Yeah. They would be, yeah, they'd be like, oh, <laughs> so, this, is how, this is how a black hole, get, this is how you make a black hole. And then you're all, then we're all sucked out of the submarine. Tyler, did you follow that submarine story? Cause I found it riveting. Yeah. It, um, it's so sad. It uh, is sad. But the other thing that was uh, quite interesting was that it, the, um, the creator, I can't remember his name now. Yeah, I like how you guys are just glossing over it like the rest of the public right now. Like, this is how yeah, these man. things don't gain any traction. You're like, well, nothing's ever going to be done about it, so let's move on to the submarine story. <laughs> we're all going to die, you fucks! And we're doing it! We're doing it to ourselves! Does anyone give a yeah, shit? Dude. Yeah, dude. All right, let's go to the submarine story. What is that? Exactly. What are we talking about here? That, it's a, it's a, actually, it's kind of like the... It's kind of like a mini version of the fucking black hole, dude. That's all crazy. right. Like, well, it's been all of America, so this could very well just be about Subway sandwiches. So I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> well, the, the people, thing that, you know, people, that's the price of doing business, I guess, on, you know, in life. People do stupid shit and end up fucking killing themselves. Uh, you know, it sucks that there are people who can kill everybody at once, but that's just so, <laughs> yeah, like, it sucks, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that sucks. You know, I don't know who. <laughs> Who would even stop them? Like, I don't know. Fucking the UN? Like, they, well, why, this, this you actually... Know. Tyler, the, you're a scientist. Why didn't they stop? Who, why haven't you stopped them? Who even yeah. have the authority? No one's yeah. even trying now. No one's like out there going, hey, maybe we should shut down before you make the black hole. So it must not be that worrisome. Well, there's, there's a problem of it hasn't happened yet, so it, it won't happen. Uh, there's no actual way to be sure that's... that's you know, bona fide truth. But with the uh, submarine, as I understand it, the designer, <laughs> the engineer, was warned repeatedly that his design was flawed. And there were yeah. lots of people that, that you know, yeah. well, coming back now to AI, 
you have a large number of the people that are intimately involved with AI who have called for a moratorium in the past, yeah. who have called for controls. We had some government hearings. The Biden administration, you know, tried to get into this. Now that I think they're just standing on the sidelines, you know, thinking like, what, what next? You know, where are we going with this? But when the people, when the principals involved are blowing the whistles, it behooves us to pay attention and, and well, get into this. Here's my issue with, and I, I was wrong about the climate, so maybe I'll be wrong about this, but who cares? The, <laughs> the, um, well, that's not true, actually. I always knew the climate was terrible. I just didn't give a fuck, but now it's getting worse. I'm like, oh, I should probably care about this. So, but the AI thing, I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around. It's almost like UFO disclosure in a way. We're getting from, okay, this fucking little computer program can make a goofy picture of a dog on Easter Island to this could destroy humanity. Like I have, a, I have a hard time getting from one side to the other um, to the point that I can't really worry too much about it. So, but what, what is the scenario? What, what is this way that AI is going to destroy humanity, Tyler? Can you well, tell me this? There, there's in, in a short. Uh, actually, there's a, a book by uh, Toby Ord called the precipice that goes okay. into the many ways that uh, we could find to destroy ourselves. But one of the things that he's pointing out is uh, What's your favorite? The evolution. <laughs> right now, it happens to be AI. Uh, as, no, I mean, yeah. What's discerned. the? Oh no. What's okay? What's the scenario where AI somehow goes from making fucking pictures of dogs on Easter Island to I don't know? I'm I'm like yeah, hot to such a where fucking society collapses. Or something. Well, what what I personally would worry about in the in the very near term is uh, turning over weapon systems to AI control, feeling that they will do it better. You, know, I, you guys okay. are probably too All young right. to remember, yeah. but when things were really tense between the United States and the former Soviet Union, uh, there were policies called launch on warn, and so that if you get signals that say, uh, oh, there's an ICBM attack coming over the poles, you shoot. Okay, because you don't yeah. want to have all your weapons destroyed in the silo. And the workaround for that was basically to have a triad where some of the weapons are out there where they can't find them. Okay, that, yeah, that's yeah. that's why they did that. But you worry that AI might become. We don't quite understand what it does, Tim. We don't quite understand how it works. And if you go back and you do the Dolly thing a couple of times, it gives you different images. Same same prompt. So yeah. the question would be like, is it? telling you the right thing you know is it going to do the right thing uh, yeah. this actually about oh my gosh five six years ago maybe more scientists became very concerned about what they would call autonomous weapons and and the release of these drones that for example would have the weapons and could make their own decisions in theater whether to shoot you know whether it met the criteria and yeah. i'm really worried about this and it, um <clears throat> do you know the game go the, the uh, Chinese game Bell. Yeah, I have heard of it, yeah. Well, they have a program that can beat any human and, and learn very, very quickly. And one of the things that came out was that humans have emotions and they do things differently than a machine. Yeah. When a machine hunts you down, there's no hesitation. There's no, right. I don't want to kill this guy. He's got, you know, this like the, the algorithm pops through and boom, you're dead. No mercy. Yeah. You can't be or, like, hey, I got a wife and kids, man. Come on. I don't want to do this. You know, all those factors yeah. go out the go out the door. How will the, you answer to God? The the robots like, fuck, I don't I'm not a robot, man. I don't have a God. They don't it's have like, a cons. Yeah. So shit. it's been it's I've been, been, been outwitted by this robot. He has no God, so I can't even appeal to God with this thing. Well, the other the other thing that's interesting is that a long time ago, um, uh, Clancy, the art, the uh, writer, Tom Clancy. No, I think. Uh, oh, you're thinking of Quincy the TV show? No, the the guy that wrote uh, Hunt for Red October. <laughs> All right, yes, Tom Clancy. Yeah. So he was talking on a, a TV show about what it would be like when we have autonomous weapons, and I think one of the points that he made was a really good one, and that is that humans get tired, they get sick of it, they don't want to fight anymore. What's yeah. it going to be like to have entities out there ah, that never true. get fatigued, that never, you know, quit? The, the Terminator come to life. 
And I, geez, okay, yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, like it, yeah. That all so that's what like I worry about. Going... Turning yeah, over. No, that's like. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, turning over uh, control of systems that really need a human at the trigger, uh, despite the the problems and and issues with that, as opposed to just having okay. faith faith in machines that we don't quite understand how they work. I don't think so. Not when you're going to pull the trigger on somebody. Yeah. Well, you know, that's near term. Have... That's here. That's we could do this today. Tyler's entire room got completely dark as he went completely dark with this. What's that about? Yes. Sundown. Uh, <laughs> oh, sundown. Nice. Yeah. Wow. There you go. That's, that's AI the light switch dimming for the yeah. mood lighting. <laughs> <laughs> see, that was natural, too. So, that see, there you go. Fuck you, robots. We, we, we <laughs> don't, did it For God's sake, don't say that. Okay. It's all being taken down. You, I would just think, I would just like to think that with all that money we give them, the military would be smart enough not to be like, let's just put this thing and let, let's, let's let this thing decide when to bomb people. It's like, all right, well, but who knows? You know, I, be, I don't know, Tim. I, I think uh, it's almost uh, inevitable that some of these things, uh, for example, as a, a pilot, uh, you know, you can only do certain maneuvers because you can only turn so fast or dive so fast or climb so fast because the human oh, body can't take yeah. it. And you have, we're going to have these machines that can do that without having any kind of physiological consequence that can shoot straighter, shoot better, shoot faster. This is where it's going to go. You know, Sounds we, like we, you're describing a UFO. We'll see when, <laughs> when, when disclosure right. happens. Yeah, when they're like, it's ours. We just uh, we just came up with these things to, you know, and they, <laughs> what if that's the big thing? Where they're like, we made these fucking UFO things. We instilled them with artificial intelligence. And it turns out they don't want to fight uh, for us anymore. So they just fly around like little balls and fucking, you know, we accidentally, we accidentally filled the lower atmosphere with these little balls that fly around. Uh, we just didn't want to tell anyone because, and they think themselves. <laughs> uh, well, it, yeah, okay. It's like I, that's I guess. two. That's now two two Christmas conspiracies for folks that they can take these conspiracies and run with them uh, into twenty twenty four. That's a good pivot. I've had you both on for a while. We'll do. We'll set up one last sort of uh, pontification, and I'll get you out of here because it's been a while. Um, Vaney, we'll start with you. What do you just? You don't need to get too specific. Just sort of where do you think this is all going as we go uh, into the new year? Um, I thought, I think I said this on your show. I thought the, I thought, I thought it was all going to go ironically downhill when the balloons were shot down. I thought they were going to be like, all right, we saw the UFO thing. It's all said and done. Then, then this Grush thing happened. Then it's like, oh, geez, this isn't over yet. So I, uh, and I, I kind of look at all this as more like the, uh, a reality show at this point because like as Tyler said at the very beginning it's all reactionary I, I nothing we we can say or do uh you know on this nothing nothing we do has any bearing on this fucking thing we're, we're viewers in a tv show so but what so where do you think the next season of uh where the UAP turns is going to go uh in 2024 I think um less interesting congressional hearings and then people tuning out and going away because i think um i mean you put it this way if the grush thing is not true you know and that we're done if the grush thing is true are we really going to know because whoever is compartmentalizing alien technology and bodies and all of this stuff for military and corporate gain do they really want that made public and all the implications of having hid this through the years right. and also the tech itself being made public? Like, why would anyone want that uh, in that right. world? So I think it goes nowhere fast. I think I, I already see signs of people on the UFO Twitter who are addicted to this narrative getting fed up with it and seeing that, yeah. like, you know, oh, politicians now are stalling this and saying, oh, yeah, you yeah, shouldn't... Yeah. Uh, pursue it. So I, I think it's going to just fizzle out in 2024, honestly. Well, with the election coming up, you never... That should occupy people's minds for a while, too. So, but... Yeah, I think... 
Well, here's I'll, I'll throw to Tyler next, and then I'll throw what I like something that came to me while Jeremy was talking. But what do you? What's your? What are your thoughts on uh, the next season of of UAP? Uh, you know, Island. Failing some kind of uh, real disclosure of uh, indisputable interest. I, I agree with Jeremy. I think that it will fizzle, except for the true hardcore who will take anything and continue to take anything. So I'll just kind of myself with this, just continue what I've done, which is sort of peripherally listen. And if they get something good, cool. I'll tune in. Let's, let's show me what you got. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I'll make a bold prediction. Uh, yeah, what the fuck? Grush sequel. Another Grush. I think there'll be a next Grush. And maybe they'll have some other shit. Maybe they'll have, like, a bad photo or something. But I think maybe maybe they'll try and up the ante one more with a, with a Grush sequel. Although, I, part of me thinks that there's going to be a Grush sequel. It'll be, like, three or four years from now. Three, three years from now. But... So maybe it'll be, maybe this next year will be just like as the grush turns and that'll be sort of the developments. I, I mean, the government shit is so fucking boring. Well, it's so I, boring. Go can ahead, I give you ahead. the thing to watch out for, which is the, the government thing is boring and I think it will fizzle out. But I think as it's fizzling out, we already see the, the tentacles of this, of, you know, talking about alien abductions and... You, you, they're going to start militarizing the terminology around that the way they did with UAP. And then they'll try to make something of that. And I say watch out for that because I think that's how the cult stuff can start. That's how the real sort of, you know, uh, now we've got gotcha you can happen because you can talk about that uh, and form beliefs around that a little bit easier than I think you can, you know, footage from a plane of a, another object. Yeah. Well, Grush sequel. That's what, uh, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. It's fun to Grush watch. Grush sequels but... and abduction cults. Next on Ufology. Abductions. Well, what you say makes me nervous that they're going to try and develop a lot of the other shit, like cattle mutilation. They only kind of do have, kind of like, hold that in a little bit. But, yeah. They're going to try to expand the UAP universe to include all the other fun shit we like. Well, and but also I think because if it if it is true and it's controlled, I mean all of this is supposition. But if that's going to happen, then watch for it to follow along the lines, much like QAnon did, of reeling you in using evangelical language and motifs. So it's going to follow a religious bent to really suck people in. I think that won't be yeah. completely obvious to everybody, but will be enough to get the get the little pang in your tummy going that you're onto something. <clears throat> yeah. Tyler, anything else? No, I'm done. There you go. Me too. All right. Well, this was fantastic. Uh, You two actually gave me something of a gift because part of me was like, I don't know. I I like the new setup and everything, and it's going really great and everything. But, you know, you always kind of wonder, like, is it? can I really get to the same place I was when I did the show over the phone? And tonight it was like, yeah, we, this is the same fucking show. It's just uh, with this new setup. So, you know, and that was because I was on with two fantastic people. Like I said, two of my favorite people in the world. And it was just, I had, it, except for when Vaney gave me shit about my face, <laughs> my, my grandpa's face. This actually was actually an enhancement on the way we used to do the show. After all this time, we had a sunset in, in this is like almost, this show's almost kind of convinced me that the video, that we need to do more video because, uh, you know, t- Tyler is looking fucking Tyler's Tyler is disappearing. <laughs> Tyler is like in an eclipse. Yeah. Maybe you should do looks, this as a video. Yeah. I, I may have to cut some of the clips together. Yeah. As a special Christmas gift for the, wow, for the yeah. All of America, for the All of America fans. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got a few different moments there. Anyway, all right. So Tyler, you already kind of t- you, you, Tyler. What's the what's the fucking blog again? I gave you shit before about the name because it's so hard to and light know. a light light a match under your face or something so you can see. It. <laughs> and I don't want to be found. That's why the name's hard. So <laughs> the the blog is uh, on WordPress. It's Synthetic Genetic Shakespeare's. 
And it's synthetic genetic Shakespeare's. It's an allusion to people basically rewriting the code of life. That's where it started almost seven right. years ago. Email uh, so. me when you do post. I'll try and keep an eye on it, but email me when you do post so I can get it out to the Twitterverse. We miss you over there, man. It's it's still a fucking nightmare world, but it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's still uh, the same old Twitter in a lot of ways, but it also fucking sucks in a big way. I think Vader, yeah, you agree? I understand. <laughs> it's kind of, you know. Yeah, I think it's terrible. Yeah. Well, the problem is, I think, I don't know who I said this to, but yeah, it's if you stay within your own little world, it's pretty decent. But like, as soon as you stray into anything in the zeitgeist, you're just overcome by troll fucking shit. Well, I, I still I have a problem where anytime I post a comment or something, somebody who is like a porn bot likes my comment. Like, immediately. <laughs> yeah. that never That's happened. One of before. the upsides of the <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> And then with that, Marjorie never, Taylor yeah. Green is always in my feed for some reason. So it's like... <laughs> you got to get off the for you. Just stay on the following. But anyways, <laughs> you, you have synthetic, genetic Shakespeare. This is going to be like my Donald Trump thing. My, like, man, woman, camera, TV person. <laughs> oh, yeah. Synthetic, genetic Shakespeare. As long as Plural. I can... Plural. Remember. Shakespeare's. Oh, synthetic, genetic Shakespeare's. You know what I was more. thinking of? <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. You know, I was thinking of the other day, Vaney, uh, that this is a throwback to anyone who did listen to the Good Parade. Uh, not a worry in the world. Yeah. Not a worry in the world. I once went to a, Tyler, I'll, we'll tell this story some other time, but Tyler, I went to a, a, a hypnotist to try and quit smoking, and the whole fucking time is like half his shtick was just to keep repeating, not a worry in the world. It was just r- ridiculous. The whole thing was ridiculous, as you can tell. As you've seen me smoke, uh, <laughs> so worked. Yeah. Thank God. So, Think how bad you'd be if it hadn't. I know. So, Vanny, what do you got going on? Uh, you know, plug all your shit so we can all uh, get on with our evenings. <laughs> uh, come find me at ourundoing.com, or if you're on YouTube right now, go to your little search engine and just plug in "He's so Vanny" and laugh and laugh and laugh and learn. Yes, he's right. so Vanny. He's in it. But OurUndoing.com yeah. is my website. Yeah. OurUndoing.com, an unknown country for the... Uh, no, forget that. Feet. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, it's easier to just to consolidate. Just go to OurUndoing.com. Oh, and you have the links on there. Okay. There you go. Our Undoing. All right. With all that said, as I said, it, this was fantastic. This was absolutely amazing. And uh, I had the time of my life. And this is, what, this is exactly... Uh, what I needed, especially for a Christmas special, the laughs and the fucking hijinks. And, um, you know, I, I knew when I thought of this, I'm put these two guys together and me, it's like old friends, just, just kind of just what the doctor ordered for a good Christmas show. So I can't thank you guys enough. I love you both so much. You know that I think the world you, um, and you know, here's to, here's to another great year. Uh, have a, have a very Merry Christmas, have a happy new year. Be safe out there, and, uh, you know, we'll all catch up, and hopefully we'll make it through, make it through, uh, make it through fucking what's to come, right? Hopefully. Well, yes. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tyler. This was a lot of fun, and uh, thanks, everyone, for listening to us. Happy holidays. There you go. Any last words, Tyler? Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs>